Right. Part two. Hallelujah. Praise the name. All right. Hallelujah. All right, All right. Two. Part two. All right. All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's a beautiful day. Put on your beautiful attitude and spirit so that you see beautiful things, beautiful things happening for you. All right. Okay. Thank you. 
volume menjadi right right oke okay, oh beta mic beta mic show me it's not it right to right right to good morning ladies and gentlemen right to right to right to right to right to right to right right to right right to okay um Right. Okay. Um. First of all, um, first of all, right. Right, 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 two. Shit, two. Okay, um, beautiful. Right, right, par, right, par, right, par. Okay, right, 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 par. Two. Okay, two. Right two. Okay two. Right par.
ladies and gentlemen, hallelujah. Two, right, right, two. Right. Right, two. Right, two. Right. Something is on. Wait, 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 uh, Mr. Balu. Something is on. There's an interference. Like, uh, right to. I know that this thing is giving for us. Hello. No, no, no. As you begin to talk, sometimes when you talk, no, it, you know, it's, I, I saw it in your point. Right. No, so you shouldn't, you shouldn't yeah. Right, see? Who is, who is that? Your speaker is on. No, your speaker should be on. It's, let only this speaker be on. Oh. Right. Wait, you know, see? Okay. 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 Right, 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 Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. He is my future. I don't want to do that. That you Hello. Okay. Sam Part.
Hello. No go walking. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Okay. Hello. All right. Hello.
what lies I see on my Pohico, on my Pohico, even if I could, on my Pohico, say what my eyes are. On my pohiko, even if I could, even if I could, on my pohiko, 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 even if I could, even if I could, on my pohiko. Can we do this together? What my eyes are seeing, so turn it from the right, my pohiko, so turn it from the wrong, my pohiko. Oh, she's good now. Sin his mercy, his mercy. Oh, what, oh, oh, what manner of man is Jesus? What manner of love is Jesus? What manner of man is Jesus? What manner of man is Jesus? What manner of man is Jesus? I can't tell you. Oh, 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 oh. So bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, 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 and all that is within me, God is with me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. All that is within me.
Yeah. 
Can I get witnesses in this room? Emmanuel, Emmanuel, hey. He never sleeps, he never slumbers. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, he's always right. Can I get witnesses in this room? Hey! Emmanuel, Emmanuel, hey. You'll never sleep, you'll never slumber. The Thanksgiving round. Can we worship God tonight? Is somebody Yeah. yeah.
I depend on you. I depend on you, Jesus. I depend on you. You have helped me in the past. You will help me again. You have helped me in the past. You will help me again.
everybody open your mouth and worship the Lord. He's worthy of the glory. He deserves the praise today. Come on everybody all over the room open your mouth and worship him. Lift your hands and bless him in this place.
Thank you. And thank you. This moment, can we make it a big round of applause for the graduates? The and the Chancellor for a wonderful procession. Can we give them a round of applause, please? May we remain standing not immediately by the university anthem, the national anthem, please. Thank you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. May we have our seat. As I yield this platform to Mr. Festus to take us on further proceedings. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, you are welcome to this occasion. I want to recognize a few persons. You will agree with me that in this occasion, such as this, we may practically not remember or not recognize everybody, but kindly permit me to recognize a few persons who are here. Well, Professor Peter Eroto, the Dean School of Postgraduate Studies, Taraba State University, Jalingo. A round of applause, please. We have in our midst Barrister Edward Mojiboye, Director, Zonal Office, Jam Port Harcourt, who is here representing the Jam Registrar, Professor Ishak Oloyode. We have Dr. Rufus Musiliu, is representing, representing Professor M. O. B. Mohammed of the Lagos State University. A round of applause, please. Wav Olorogun Albert Akwamuji, a senior advocate of Nigeria. Wav Alaji D. Mohammed Farouk, former Director General, National Orientation Agency. Wav Alaji Mohammed Baji, the Chairman of Lafia. We have Mr. Frank Ovie Zomo, the MD CEO, Sonu Logistics Limited. A round of applause. We have Chief Mrs. Beauty, Anidio Mote Rofo, Agmo of Agmo Kingdom. We have Mr. Audu Igo, a business tycoon. We also have Mr. Gaga Mori, also a business tycoon here in Amis this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Air Commodore Mike Igu, retired Air Force instructor, pilot, and one-time commander 
Nigerian Air Force Detachment Medugri and Nigerian Air Force Station Enugu. Ladies and gentlemen, as small people join us, we'll recognize and introduce them, but know that wherever you are seated, you are a special guest and you are cordially welcome. At this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, I want to call on one of our own, my colleague, Mrs. Amashe Oti, to kindly establish the protocol. Thank you, sir. Good morning, distinguished guests. My name is Omar Shea Oti. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Michael and Cecilia Foundation. And it is my singular privilege to establish protocol this morning so that subsequent speakers just need to stand on the existing protocol. Your Excellency, Senator Dr. Ifain Yokoa, the Executive Governor of Delta State, the co-founder of Michael and Cecilia Hebrew University, Dr. Mrs. Cecilia Ibu OFR, Madam, members of State Executive Council, the Vistian Vice Chancellors, Vistian Rectors and Provosts, Your Royal Majesties and Royal Highnesses, my Lords Spiritual and Temporal, Chairman and members of the Board of Trustees, Chairman and members of Council, Principal Officers of the University, members of Senate and Congregation, our guest speakers for today. Olorogun Peter Ego and Olorogun Charles Majoro, parents and friends of the university, the graduates of today, distinguished invitees, great Israelites, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen of the press, you are all welcome today, and I wish us successful proceedings today. Welcome. Thank you very much, Chief Operating Officer, Michael and Cecilia Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony is about to start proper. We have to hand over this occasion into the hands of God so that we can be confident that God is here with us. On this note, ladies and gentlemen, I want to quickly invite Reverend Canon Gabriel Pangba to please take us in the opening prayer. Please shall we rise? as we take the opening prayer. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for this occasion of the combined second and third convocation ceremony of the Michael and Cecilia Hebrew University. We thank you for guests seated, we thank you for those who are on their way. We thank you for the time these graduates spent here. We thank you because their day has come. Glory be to your name in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we declare this occasion opened in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We ask, Lord, that you will take charge of every activity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Are we all be seated? The Chancellor, Ma, the Chancellor to the University, members of the Council and Senate, my Lords. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Michael and Cecilia Hebrew University, Agbaroto, empowered by the law, medals, prizes, vice. shall in relation members of the university decide at all meetings i therefore humbly call on the chancellor dr Ms. cecilia hebrew m f r o f r to 
constitutes this assembly as a convocation for the conferment of degrees. My chancellor. Praise the Lord. I, the Chancellor of Michael and Cecilia Hebrew University, hereby constitute this assembly as a convocation of the Michael and Cecilia Hebrew University, Agbara Oto, for the purpose of conferment of degrees. Thank you, the Chancellor. I now invite you to develop to develop deliver your welcome address, ma. I am delighted to welcome you to this fifth memorial lecture in honor of Barauto Kingdom and, and founder of the Hebrew organization worldwide. Olorogu Michael Christopher Nigeria Hebrew, OFR of blessed memory, and to the second and third combined convocation ceremonies of the Michael and Cecilia Hebrew University, MCIU in short, Agbara Oto, Ugeli North, Delta State, Nigeria. I am especially grateful to God for the privilege to witness yet another milestone despite the global pandemic of COVID-19 that has practically changed the course of our lives since February, 2020. It is fit to describe our experience with the words of the prophet Jeremiah in Lamentation Chapter 3, verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fails not. Praise the Lord. When we enrolled our first set of students in September through October 2015, we were filled with joy to see the manifestation of a dream that we had nurtured for 10 years. And ever since then, we have made giant strides in the fulfillment of our vision to be a university that will reduce poverty by raising well-rounded graduates who will be builders of nation nations in which they apply themselves. The impact of contributions in this regard is to set new standards for the higher education in Nigeria. MCIU was recently recognized at the National Education Summit and awards where MCIU was decorated 
the higher institution making a difference in the education sector. I think you will clap for that. Sometimes I have to, I have to encourage you to, to give us you know, an, an ovation because these things don't come easy. Praise the Lord. MCIU could not have achieved such recognition without you all seated here and many more out there. And for this, I say thank, thank you to you all. I would also like to specially acknowledge my beloved husband, Solologun, Dr. Michael Ibru, OFR, of blessed memory, whose vision, spirit of, which, which visionary spirit provided a launch pad for this university. And we cannot but remember his visions and the way he looked at education. As we celebrate our second and third set of graduating students today, we remain committed to providing a world-class education that is suitable and adaptable to our fast changing world while promoting the individual all around development. Dear graduates, I would like to remind you that education is a lifelong pursuit. It is therefore crucial that you do not rest on your oars. In today's knowledge-based economy, you must continuously invest in your own self-education if you are to remain relevant. The academic rigor of the university has expanded your mind and equipped you with valuable knowledge. However, knowledge is only useful to the extent that it is applied. Therefore, you must actively apply your education to the process of creating value, solving problems in very practical ways that will not only improve the quality of life in your immediate society, but also contribute to development in the world at large. The peculiar challenges of today's world have presented you with unprecedented opportunities to excel as innovators and develop disruptive innovative solutions in the Nigeria, in the Nigerian and global economies. Select sectors. However, to maximize these opportunities, you must be determined to see stepping stones where others see stumbling blocks and shine your light instead of complaining about lack of opportunities. In a way, we tend to create opportunity by the way we interact. Opportunities are bound, but sometimes we are waiting for them to fall on our lap and it is not so. You are part of the creative process of bringing opportunity about. MCIU has groomed you to be nation builders. Continuously seek out opportunities to make a lasting positive impact while contributing to the advancement and stability of every society where you take up residence. 
I was saying to somebody that all of you admire Barack Obama. He is of an African father, American mother. He became president of the USA. People marvel at it, but it started from the community level, beginning to affect people positively. And in the end, he became well known and went to some of the best institutions, educational institutions like Harvard. So this is all within our reach. And I believe we shall hear more about such opportunities as we go on throughout this uh, program. This is especially important in today's world of increasing volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. It is time to let go of entitlement mentality. All of us are always waiting for that huge bag of money to drop on our laps. It is we that are going to create those opportunities. They will come, but you have to work at it. Rather than complaining about difficulties, commit yourself to resolving challenges instead of focusing on what you can receive. What can you contribute really is the issue, isn't it? Think about how you can create value wherever you are. Create va creating value is not necessarily always seeing money in front of you because you are so focused on money. These opportunities as you create them, they will translate into monetary earnings as time goes on. Think about how you can create value. Wherever you are, make a conscious effort to be a producer rather than a consumer. Everywhere you go, you have to be a community member. You have to associate with those around you. It doesn't matter where, all over the world. And once you do that, people begin to recognize you as a contributor to the entire community you live in. Do not succumb to the culture of land helplessness that makes you think your contribution is irrelevant. Now, we tend to do that all the time, thinking, well, you know, my opinion doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter today, and you reconstruct and represent, it will matter tomorrow. Remember that pitch darkness, even the tiniest gleam of light makes a world of difference. So I challenge you to play your part diligently and not lose hope. You can't afford to lose hope in this world. If you lose hope, then it means you have devalued yourself. You have devalued yourself, your sense of self-importance. Everybody is important. As the Nobel Prize laureate, as Bishop Desmond Tutu wisely said, hope is being able to see that there is light despite all the darkness. Hope teaches us to have a go at it. Don't give up. You must never, ever give up. And I remember, Winston Churchill, England was in the doldrums. Churchill was not particularly a bright person, but he had the courage and the hope for England, Great Britain, to win the war. In the end, we had little or nothing compared to what German had, Britain won the war. We must not forget these examples, they are there. But also think about, meditate upon, so that as we go into the world, we go armed with these signposts that are all across the world for us to emulate. Hope is being, is being able to see that there is light. Whenever there's darkness, there must be light somewhere. You must go find that light and follow it. Man, when challenged and 
follow the challenge up, is usually becoming a more productive person in the process. Please remember to stay in touch with the spring MCIU you drank from as you go out to change your world and enrich our collective experience in many, in many positive, impactful, impact, impactful ways. Now, I'm going to end this speech because I can't find the rest of the speech here, but it's found here there. Okay. Register is putting me into it. <laughs> now, to close, I want us to know, especially the new graduates, that the world is beckoning to us to come and make impact and to change the world to be a better place. Thank you, and God bless you all. A round of applause for our chancellor. Thank you, our chancellor. Thank you, ma. The chancellor, the pro chancellor, the vice chancellor, and the distinguished guest on the high table, ladies and gentlemen. I now call upon the pro chancellor and chairman of the council to deliver his welcome address. Pro Chancellor, sir. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen standing on the protocol which has been read already. I'm delighted to be able to present this short speech with the title, Education for National Development. Not for national development, for development, it's a question mark. Education for national development. We talk a lot about the beauty of education everywhere, including our country. After nearly 60 years, I believe, of solid university education in this country, sometimes we begin to wonder whether it has gotten us very far. And so I ask the question, how relevant is education in terms of national development, at least as far as this country is concerned? It is my thoughts. So I begin. I consider it a real privilege and honor to stand here as a pro-chancellor to welcome all our guests to this eventful ceremony, the second convocation ceremony in which graduates of two sets of outgoing students, 2019 to 2020 and 2020 to 2021, of MCIU will be admitted to first degrees in their respective disciplines. MCIU considers it a binding duty to organize this ceremony every year as a way of responding to instituted university culture the world over. In my welcome address here two years ago, I hopped on the subject of private universities as veritable tools and alternatives to candidates who are unable to gain admission to public universities in this country. Nigerian universities stand shoulder to shoulder with African universities in general, gaining 37 out of 200 top universities in Africa. That cannot be too bad. 
37 out of 200 universities in Africa, you have Nigerian universities. That cannot be done. So let us not run our universities down too much. And stated hence, there exists no justification for admission seekers to choose outside universities outside of Nigeria. Admitted that experiences gained outside one's own locality are important contributors, contributes to overall development of the mind, but in the engaging atmosphere of dwindling national and domestic economy, parents and guardians and are better advised to look inwards for children's education as this will generally cost them less. Why do we need education? Do we really need education? Against the background of what we have learned from our forefathers when there was no education, respect for elders, respect for the community, the cleanliness of the community in which we live and so on and so forth. Do we need education? I want at this point to pay special tribute to the founders of university, of this university. Honorable Dr. Michael and Dr. Mrs. Cecilia Ibru for their vision for a first class university in Nuhubo land, offering courses tailored towards the elevation of economics, commerce, and technology. Courses which demand high skill workforce in a global competitive economy. Universities such as the Michael and Cecilia Ibru University are dedicated towards improving basic human needs and training and raising standards of living and quality of life. According to Professor Emovo, Education motivates and accelerates the pace of overall development of individual and the nation. It motivates and accelerates the pace of individual development as well as that of the nation. Education seeks to produce skilled manpower and generates knowledge for improved economy. It inspires individuals to grow knowledge for improved economy. It inspires individuals to grow their innate capacities so as to be able to contribute to the growth of their society. Education serves to inculcate the right attitudes and values, elements which elevate integrity, which without integrity, a society is consigned to the garbage dump of corruptibility. I want to repeat that point. Without good education, a society is consigned to the garbage dump of corruptibility. Are we saying that Nigeria has not gained from education? Are we saying that those who rule us do not have sufficient education to know what is going on and what is right for the, for the nation? Dr. Cecilia Ibru herself made the clarion call in 2019 when she said, our passion for education is born out of the desire to change our world for good, to change our world for good. She goes on, in 2005, we had the seemingly lofty dream of establishing an institution where the average Nigerian youth could get a world-class education at a fraction of its cost abroad. That vintage statement is clearly in tandem with my position of education at lesser cost as earlier proposed, i.e. that the time has come when we have to look inwards for the education of our children, especially for those who are not able to gain admission into public universities. No matter the situation, private universities in Nigeria will be much cheaper than sending a child abroad for a university training. I'm not condemning that if you can afford, no problem. But where the funds are tight, you are better advised to look inward for a private university. Dr. Sir Keith Joseph, Minister of Education in the British Parliament made this statement. 
Education, higher education should serve the individual, the society and the economy. For the individual to transmit values, for society to transmit increased understanding, for the economy to provide essential skills. So we can see here that education has many positives and we therefore must embrace education. The question is how much have our leaders embraced these beautiful ingredients of education? Because I believe that if they have done that, certainly Nigeria wouldn't have been in the position in which it finds itself today. Has Nigeria, has Nigeria developed through educating her people? Has Nigeria developed through the education of her people? Chairman, sir, that is a difficult question for me to answer, and I'm sure for you too. The answer is both yes and no. Yes, because the country's civil service, the armed forces, customs, immigration, police, and all agencies of government are now manned by our people, Nigerians. And so it is, and so it is with all independent African nations. But that alone does not translate to development. Advancement and development must be seen in the overall context of massive improvements in the texture and quality of lives of the masses, and not just that of the elites. And this is what is absolutely missing in present day African nations, including Nigeria. Which reflects the warped inner priorities of most African leaders and by extrapolation arrived at where it would make where it would lead in terms of development of a nation. Rakia Omar, former executive director of African Watch said, why should anybody care about Africans when Africans themselves don't care about Africans? Why should anybody? We expect the Europeans and the Americans to come and develop our country for us when we don't care about developing ourselves and our people and our environment and our country. Why should anybody care? But perhaps in a more evocative manner, Blaise Harden in a book titled Africa or African Dispatches from a Fragile Continent said, if you took a quarter of a century's worth of His Excellencies, the African leader, and tossed this into a blender, you would come up with a big man who looks like this. His face is on the money. He named streets, streets, hospitals, universities, and almost every other thing after himself. He insists on being called doctor or chief or a haji. He bans all political parties except the one he controls. His rule has one goal to perpetuate his reign as a big man. This type of rule has betrayed Africa. The continent has been sucked spirally downwards the, has been sucked downwards in a spiral of declining food production, civil wars and stripes, and rampant corruption. Big man buys loyalty using state muscle resources. What they cannot buy, they compare using state muscles. That they perpetuate their reign, not by saving their countries, but by consuming their countries. Now, can we deny that? of what we experience in our own country, Nigeria. I'm not the one writing this, but it strikes me that that's the experience I have gained in this country. Now, I ask, what has been our own experiences since the return of the democratic government in 1999? You can judge for yourself, but let me challenge your minds with a reflection by Robert Mugabe, late president of Zimbabwe, when he said, how do you convince the upcoming generation that education is the key to success when we are surrounded by poor graduates and rich criminals. Now, so we talk about Yahoo boys. The Yahoo boys have arisen out of the what they are seen in the society. Or if I may ask, 
Does education really matter in Africa for the purpose of development? Maybe we have not arrived at that point, but one wishes that we had arrived. I thank you all for listening and God bless my brother. A round of applause for our pro chancellor, Professor Peter Hugo. Thank you, sir. We, are, we appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, the next item is goodwill messages. And I want to invite our pro, our vice chancellor, our vice chancellor to come out, Professor Ibinka from Akwe to receive the goodwill messages. Before, I want all the sister institutions to please line up over there and come in one by one and go back. Please just come up and then you line up here and come and present your goodwill message. We'll give you only one minute to talk. The chancellor, the chairman of council, principal officer, graduating students, royal fathers, I'm sorry, royal fathers, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mrs. P. Subido. I'm a deputy registrar in the Delta State University representing the registrar, Mrs. Rufina Ufiofio, who is unavoidably asked due to exigencies of the office. So I want to wish the Cecilia, the Michael and Cecilia Hebrew University happy con convocation ceremony. Thank you. Let's clap for Delso. Clap for Delso, our own Delso. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Next. Um, congratulations to the uh, celebrants today. My name is Barista Edward Johnson Mojiboye. Uh, the director of Jamb Office, Potako Zone, are standing here on behalf of uh, our registrar, Mr. Integrity Professor Ishak Olanirwa Joluede. He had charged me to convey his goodwill message to the institution, and um, he expressed regret for not being around. That's why. He had told me to come around. Congratulations once more. Thank you very much. God bless you all. That's uh, Director, Mr. Director, Mr. Johnson Mojiboye. He's my friend when I was in JAM. He's my very close friend. Thank you for coming. Next. Standing on the existing protocol, I'm Dr. Rufai Musiliu. I'm representing Professor M. O. B. Muhammad from Lagos State University, Ojo. My message is that the guardian and everybody, we should learn the good attribute from the founders of this university. That whatever God bless you with, you should not forget your people, your indigenous people. Unlike so many people in this country, we had their investors, all over, investment is all over the world. They forget their local people. The Hebrews have been able to have so much positive impact in his native people. It's not easy because if you, we are Africans and we know what Africans are made up of. Even if you check the scriptures, your number one enemy is always your own people. Check it, Jesus Christ in the Bible, even in the Quran, the Qureshi, they are the number one enemy of the prophet. But despite that, they have been able to invest and impart the life of people in the Agbaraoto and make people like me. When you talk of Agbaraoto, like I told the people when we came here for a conference a month ago, that it is the Agbara and the Oto in Lagos State that is so popular. We have a town in Lagos State. We are at Denning so yeah, College of Education is located. It's called Otto. And there is another town very close to it called Agbara. It's an industrial town. But with the effort of some individual, 
the native of this country, they have done what we can refer to as unquantifiable benefit. So it's a good message for all of us to invite. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That's Dr. Refine. What he's saying is that there's Agbara Otto, there's Agbara in Lagos, and there's Otto in Lagos. So we are the best. Clap for us. <laughs> A chancellor and founder, a mama, the pro chancellor, chairman of council, members of council, senate, staff and students, distinguished business and gentlemen. I am from Edwin Clark University, the vice chancellor of the Clark University. On behalf of uh, the proprietor and founder of Edwin Clark University, Chief Dr. Edwin Kagudo Clark, on behalf of Council Senate, members of staff and students, we bring you greetings. And we pray that the Almighty God will continue to move this university forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's not the size that matters in the university, the quality of what comes from it. I studied in the United States of America. I studied there. Went to small colleges and big colleges. The quality is in small colleges. There's that care of students. The way you treat students, the way they treat you when they graduate. We are where we are today. Because the way we treated our students. So quality and care is in private university. I want to thank you. Thank you so much for having this college. University here. And I will grace you with long life and quality health in Jesus' name. We will provide for you, for our students who are living in this place. Okay, the Heavenly Father opens doors for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Secondly, I'm the chairman of the Committee of Vice Chancellors of Private Universities. I have been chairman of all Nigerian universities, just relinquished that post about a month ago. Now, I'm still the chairman of the private universities. On behalf of all universities in Nigeria, and private universities in particular, bring you greetings, Vice Chancellor. Wish you the best. And God's continuous leadership. In the name of Jesus. Congratulations to you. That was Professor Ola Bemiro, the Vice Chancellor of Edwin Clark University. Thank you, my vice chancellor. We appreciate you, ma. Thank you very much. One thing he has forgot got me to say, he was the first vice chancellor, Professor Olabemiro of Bowen University. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Let's clap for him for that again. I appreciate you. I want to invite Dr. Benson Uweru to give a brief citation of our people. He will tell us do, who those people are. Dr. Benson, you are welcome. Let's clap for him. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. All protocols respectfully observed. Today is a great day in the history of the Urubu Nation in the history of Nigeria and in the history of the lives of uh, everyone who's connected to the reason why we are here this morning. And we give all thanks to the almighty God for his mercies and grace upon our lives. Today we stand on the who was a colossus, who was an icon, who we remember this period a man who was once renowned as the richest man in Africa, and I dare say the whole world, because his shoulders were so big that what we are enjoying today and what we're experiencing today are the legacies of a great leader and a great man. May his soul continue to rest in peace. Amen. At this point, we are going to take a very short citation of our first speaker, 
who would be speaking to us shortly. And he's uh, a father figure to me and a great man that I have come to respect because he is an exemplary father and a leader. He's an ace broadcaster, a former executive director of the Nigerian Television Authority. And he was a former director general of the Nigerian Lottery Regulatory Commission. Ladies and gentlemen, with your kind permission, may I invite to the platform, Mr. Peter Ego, as I give a short citation before his speech. Let's put our hands together for him. Olorogu Peter Ego, MFR. Growing up as a young little boy, I, I was in awe of this great legend and I never knew he was a product of the Robo Nation. We thank God for his health, we thank God for his life, and we celebrate his legacies while he's alive. Let's put our hands again one for his great achievement. At the vanguard of film production and television industry in Nigeria is a name that is synonymous with excellence, a name synonymous with broadcasting, a name synonymous with what we now refer to as the new media because he was one of the pioneers of the transformation that we enjoy today. Mr. Peter Ego is a household name that evokes pleasant memories of his legacies at the Nigerian Television Authority for over three decades. Known for his milestone achievements, Mr. Peter Ego is a pace setter whose work has been instrumental to the evolution of the television and film production in Nigeria. Let's put our hands together for him. Our guest lecturer today is a proud Roboman born in the city of Jos on the 28th of March, 1948, Plato State. His roots can be traced to Ethiop East local government area of Delta State. And he's proudly an Urobo. Olorogo Peter Ego is here with us. Let's put our hands together for him. Like I said, it's a short citation before we get to the very big um, citation, which we would um, do later. But I just like to focus on some of the achievements uh, and recent contributions that um, we need to remember him for. He was one of the pioneers in the Nigerian television industry. Some of the household names that we know are now referred to as great successes in Nollywood, you know, across the value chain of the television uh, industry, radio, just the social media space, telecommunications. Is a big icon right in front of us. He was the force behind many soap operas and TV programs. If you remember Cockrow at Dawn, how many of us remember Cockrow at Dawn? Let's put our hands together for him. It was a very wonderful program that was commended by the Union of National Radio and Television Organiz Organizations of Africa, URTNA. It was also selected for screening at the International Public Television Screening Conference under the Rockefeller Grant of the United States of America in 1984. Some of his awards include, amongst others, Best Producer and Best Director at the NTA Silver Jubilee Awards of 1984. Let's put our hands together for him. Merit Award by the National Association of the Nigerian Theater Arts Practitioners, NANTAP, April 2004. Our guest speaker is an Lurugu from Ethiopia, of 
Delta states, where he hails from, but also has other traditional titles, including Dan Jikan Kabi by the Emir of Agungu in the year 2005. He has a Lifetime Achievement Award in recognition of outstanding contribution to the film industry in Africa by the board of the African Film Academy, April 2006. He holds the very prestigious national award conferred on him by the Federal Republic of Nigeria, MFR, which means member of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 2006. And recently, just last year, uh, we were aesthetic to realize that uh, history never forgets those who write their names in the sands of time. It is not the longevity or the amount of years we leave, but the quality of impact we leave behind and the trails for others to blaze. And today, we celebrate Olorogo Peter Eagle last year. 2020, despite the COVID pandemic and all the challenges, the African Magic Viewers' Choice Award, AMVCA, conferred on him and his son, Tosin Eagle, a dual recognition and award of Industry Merit Award at the 11th edition of March 2020. Let's put our hands together for him. So he has not just been a success, he's also been able to replicate himself. You know, his son, Tosin Ego, is one of the veteran producers in the movie industry, you know, with great production and great movie stories that we're enjoying in Nollywood today. We are very proud. He's happily married with children uh, and blessed with God's divine health. He speaks over eight Nigerian languages fluently. I'm sure that uh, in the course of his presentation, he will show you some, uh, some of his flair, language flair, you know, in entertaining us with his, uh, his skills and his grace and his gift. Ladies and gentlemen, to the glory of God, I present to you our guest speaker, who is going to speak to us on a topic, you can be the best, Olorogo Peter Eagle. Let's put our hands together for him. Olorogo, you're welcome. Permit me to stand on existing protocols. And just before he sits down, I hope the Vice Chancellor will allow me, when I prepare my next documentary, to come and get the best voice to voice my documentary. You have one of the best broadcast voices. And he. Permit me to break protocol again. Someone I respect, admire, and love left his domain to come to support me today. And I cannot start but first recognize my father here, Omogu, 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 Osuto, the OV of Uwe. A childhood friend also came all the way from Lafia. He's the German Lafia, and he seated there in the audience with a please. And then uh, representing the Emmy of Lafia. And of course, Idi Farouk, who has come through Tick and Tin with me. That's another story. You're all welcome. And my brothers, and the young man who has begun to showcase his spirit and love for everyone else, Ovie, who is here with us. Audukia, minister, and the rest of them, of course. For my wife, I'll come to her later. <laughs> what touches us most should be last served. Let me thank God Almighty for making today possible. And also congratulate all of you, the graduating students for completing your studies in your various disciplines. I know that today is a special day for you. And I can imagine that today and many more days to come, 
you will be celebrating and there will be parties galore. But at the end of it all, I'm sure that question that has always persisted in the minds of all graduates, graduates will be what lies ahead? What comes next? For me, when I graduated, I was lucky. I didn't have to ask myself that question because a few months before the federal government had come interviewing people for jobs, and I was one of those successful ones. So as I graduated, I already had a job. I had my letter of appointment in my hand. And when I reported for work to the then Northwest state, which covers Zampara, Sokoto, Kebi, and two other states, I was posted to a place called Bida. And I recall that some of my friends, including Nidhi Farouk, were saying, Bida, where is Bida on the map? Where, what are you going to do there? Why don't you resign? And I said, no. The house has always said, wherever you said it will grow. The chick that will grow to be a cock, no matter what you throw at it, it will find its way. So I went to Bida. And I was sent to teach in a teacher's college. I got there and found that most of the students were mature students. But I was happy to be in Bida because the very first week I reported, I was allocated a brand new three-bedroom bungalow. And I walked to the bank to open an account. And my account was credited by the bank manager when he had filled my car loan form. And he gave me my money to buy a car. So the very first week I received, I had a job, I had a house, and I had a brand new car, a Toyota Corona. Then, but my students were all adults, so adult children, I was a teacher's college. And they would stroll into class, stroll out of class, stroll away from compound. And I said, no, I have to engage them. So I listened to one of the boys singing and I asked him, what's your background? He said, his father is the lead drummer called Angali Drummers in Nupi Land. So I said, bring your drums to the class, school the next day. So he went and brought his drums. So I listened to them and I wrote a dance drama called Ogaga's Heart. Now, most of the students at first didn't want to participate in the group because it was all boys school. So I said, okay, I know the incentive. So I drove to the girls school, saw the principal, I said, please, would you allow 20 of your girls to join my boys? She said, over my dead body, those boys, I can't let my girls go to that place. And I said, listen, you have reverend sisters here. Yeah. Get a bus. They'll board the bus, drive to the school hall, they finish performance, and straight back to your school. She said, are you serious? I said, I'm dead serious. I think about it. Two days later, she called me and said, they will come. And when the bus drove into the school compound, and the 20 girls came out, every boy in the school wanted to be part of the drama society. So I looked at them dance and I selected my artists and we presented this play, which became a big success. The entire schools wanted to watch. The entire town wanted to watch. For three months, we were performing. Then the principal said, you must tour the state. So we taught the state. By the time we got to Sokoto, the governor had heard about it and wanted to watch it. And when he saw the performance, he said, ah, this must be the state's entry for the 1974 Festival of Arts and Culture. We went to Lagos, among 12 other states, 12, 12 states in all. We were one of the three winning places with Ogaga's hat. I led the entire Northwest in there, and they gave me lots of money. And my brothers, including the Farouk, who came, every part of my room, there was cash, there was money all over the place. But 1975, the state was now setting up his own television station. And I chose to go to that television station. And my brother said, no, 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 no. Why leave all that money? Let's, what is in a name written by, produced by Peter Ego? What is that name when there's money to be made? I said, that is my dream. In the end, my parents intervened and I went to television. Of course, the next is history. You've heard Benson read about all the things I achieved while in broadcasting. As she said, I won many awards, national, international, and I felt fulfilled. I felt I'd done my best. And many other people thought so too, because there were so many parties organized in my favor. NTA itself, 
committee of friends. Somebody even wrote a book about me. And um, the business community in Lagos hosted me. But I, I appreciated all of them. But one particular one touched my heart. The University of Ibadan, my alumni, the theater's department wanted to host me. They felt I had done them proud. When I got to Ibadan with my team, there were dancers and drummers from the gates. And they led us to the theater where there were all the lecturers and students were waiting. And in the next two hours, they performed and danced and sang and made speeches commending me. At the end of it all, I was asked to come to stage, just like I'm standing now, to come and talk to the students and give them my words of wisdom. What were the secrets of my success? All that success I had achieved, what was the secret? I climbed up to the stage, took up the microphone, and opened my mouth to speak, and I couldn't say a word. I stood there, and I couldn't say a word. Because at that moment, I couldn't see the students anymore. All I could see was my mother, with that black stone that most mothers use to scrub their children's feet. I'm screaming in pain as she's scrubbing the scales from my feet so that my feet can fit into the Christmas shoes they've just bought for me, which after Christmas we'll put back in a box for the next year. I saw myself and my brothers. My father, mining, was a tin miner. The years before had been good. We were occupying four rooms in the compound. Now things had gone down and he couldn't pay rent. And we're moving all our things from three rooms to one room and all our luggage like littered in the corridor. I recall coming back from school with my brothers and my mother leaving the house, looking all padded, looking so fat. I said, ah, how mama, how mama, waiting mama chop when she don't fat like this. And she goes and comes back a little later, looking thinner with food in her hands. Even as a child, I knew she had gone to sell her wrappers to buy food for us. I remembered after my secondary school, I made a division one and I was so happy. And I was rushing with it to my uncle who had helped pay my last dance fees to show him, look, uncle, I didn't let you down. I made a division one. And the mother stopping me at the gate to say, sorry, eh, 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 eh. my picking don't tell to the people children school fees. If you're part of it, you pay your school fees, go learn mechanic. I stood there, but Okie Mbute, my father's fortune has swung again, and he was now, had, he had some money, and I could afford to go to one of the three universities that had been admitted to, University of Ibadan, but unfortunately, the funds couldn't come, and I could remember squatting, sleeping on the mat between beds of my friends in the university, and sometimes standing outside this cafeteria, while one of them struggled to sneak out his meal ticket so I could have something to eat. And then I remembered, I had a recorder that I used to play. I went with some friends to some Lebanese who graciously gave us materials on credit. And we went from hotel to hotel, playing my flute, singing and dancing to make I recall coming back to school just before exams and walking to my department. I sneaked in and the lecturer, Professor Adedeji, saying, who is that? And I said, I'm Peter. I said, you, I haven't seen you here before. I said, I'm a very shy person. I'm always at the back. He said, I know everybody in my class. Go and wait for me in my office. So I go to his office, believing that I was going to be sent out to the university. I had to be attending classes because when his lectures were holding, that was when I was out selling materials to make money. So he said, my son, tell me the truth. So I told him the truth. He looked at me and he said, listen, we lecturers are not just here to teach you. We are also your parents. And if you have problems, come to us and promise me this. No more going to sell clothes. No more going to dance in hotels. Every week you come to me, I'll give you pocket money until after your exams finish. 
he did all that. Please, a round of applause for Professor DDG of blessed memory. Those were the lecturers we had that time. And I'm glad to say that at the end of the day, when the final exams did come in his class, I was getting top of the class. And we became friends for many, many years. Then I've left university now. And I remember all those long, tiring nights on location. Many, many months and weeks away from my family. My children growing up without me, my wife alone in the house, a single mother, a single parent, bringing up the children. And I'm out there on location for months and months and months. I remember one time my DG called me to say, look, why are you, you've been away from home for four months. Please go back to your home, wherever you want to go, travel with your wife. And me carrying my wife, she was pregnant with the children in the car. And I'm driving from Sokoto through the area to Kaduna to contact artists for the program I felt was going to be an important program, Kokro Adon. We were making contacts with all the artists and all the rest of them. We agreed on a date for them to report in camp. So I get back to, this, to Sokoto, drop my wife in the house, and I go to the studio to see my car, and I can't see my wife. And I'm told that she started bleeding and drove herself to the hospital. She got to the hospital, collapsed. She was taken to the theater, and she had lost her baby. And I recall standing by her bedside the next day saying, I know you've gone through so much pain. I know it is terribly wrong of me. But my cast and crew are already assembling in just, And if I'm not there, everything breaks down. So I have to leave you in hospital to report for that program. So I left the poor lady. She had just lost her baby. Please help me thank So I stand there before all these students, they're all waiting for these words of wisdom. And those were the thoughts that came to me. But then in the end, I smiled and I said, well, in spite of all those problems, in spite of all those crises, in spite of all those pains that I caused, I'm standing today a successful person by all measures. So now you graduates, I'm standing before you today, and I respect that you are also asking the question, what lies ahead? A lot of the things I should tell you, I have heard already in the chancellor's speech. I've read some of the other things, and I believe that you, there are more there. Please don't throw that book. When you go back, go through them well. All I can say to you is that from my own experience, nothing good comes easy. You must work hard for everything if you want to succeed. There is no free meal. You must go there. Jess Brown says, I don't want nobody to give me nothing. Open up the door and I'll take it myself. Go out there and fend to do your best. And two, as we in Delta said, know yourself, not because know who you are, know what is your background. If you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth, what's wrong with making it gold or making it platinum? If you were born with nothing, that's even more challenge to succeed and make yourself better. So you must always strive to be the best. I know that many of you will say, well, in your own time, the problems we have now you don't have them. Truly, Nigeria today is fraught with so many problems. Insecurity, kidnapping, ethnic rivalry, and all the rest of them. And you will hear, as you go out there, many naysayers who will tell you, look, forget about this country. There's nothing good in this country. And there are those who would want to lead you wrongly. They know nothing, but they want to mislead you. But like the TV people always say, a blind man, not a show blind man way. Don't let anybody mislead you. The 
Fortunately, many of you will agree with me that in spite of those naysayers and all that, that Nigeria is a wonderful country. Wonderful in the sense that if you open your eyes, your opportunities are plenty there. Which opportunities? Let me talk about my own industry, the broadcast and media industry. If, whether you like it or not today, among all the industries in the country today, the broadcast and movie industry is one that has moved the envelope, the envelope and done so much for this country, nationally and internationally. With little or no support from government and can't have enough of Nigerian content. So the broadcast industry is very big and large. Right now, there's what we call digitalization going on. We're moving from analog to digital. And with digitalization comes more channels, more stations. And more stations mean more content. And when I say content, you know, of course, that to produce that content, you need actors, you need writers, you need directors, you need engineers, you need makeup people, you need hair designers, you need the entire gamut of every industry. It's an ancillary industry to the film and movie industry. So if you come into this industry, the sky is the limit. There's so much to be benefited. The broadcast industry today, the value, if I get my figures right, we're talking about over $229 billion by 2024. So this is one particular, whether you, whatever your talent, whether you can sew or dance or sing or write or think, today you're in the age of the computer. With one touch of your button, you access the entire world. So the whole world is at your feet. Fortunately, this university, the Michael Celebro University has not only filled you with the knowledge, but given you the well-rounded education to compete with anybody anywhere in the world. This is a big round of hope to the university for this. So, what then am I asking you to be? Please, I had said, as you go out now with that background from the university, be worthy ambassadors so that one day, one of you or many more will be standing somewhere like this and it's been honored. And you can bring glory to your alma mater, wherever you are, not just to the university, but to the country as a whole. But know that to be the best, it's not just the knowledge, but also, perhaps you can help me say, hard work, integrity, transparency, and very important, sacrifice. Many times when I was in the studio in Sokoto, when we started, I'll ask my bosses for money to buy food for the production. They say, sorry, no money. I call my wife, is my lunch ready? She says, yes, please send it to me in the studio. That becomes the prop in the movie. What about curtains? No curtains, please remove the curtains to my house and I bring them down. Because each time I do that, I know I wanted to prove a point. And nobody appreciates what you have if you don't bring it out. If it's in your head, nobody sees it. You have to bring it out. And to bring it out, you don't ever get a perfect combination of what you need. So you have to keep improvising and be creative. Please, as you go, make friends. But as you make friends, never forget the old ones. Idi Farouk there is my childhood friend from primary school. We're still together. And there are many of them like that. Don't forget, you will need them as you go. The new ones and the old ones. Please, please, please. Go down on your knees many times and pray for a good partner. Because no matter your dream, no matter your ambition, no matter your spirit, if you have the wrong partner, it will be truncated. This university today is an example of strong partnership. I was able to succeed mainly because of the wife that I had. Who tolerated me 
with not just the good, but also the bad and the ugly. So Dele, thank you very much for understanding. So you need a good partner to be able to survive. And of course, the family. Please, the family plays a great role in your life. Don't be like Peter who would be six months away from his family and is out there making people happy while his own family suffers. But unfortunately, that is the bane of our broadcast. One thing I also remember very vividly, when I was general manager at NTA Enugu, I was producing then Masquerade, Zebudaya, and I was 430. We would finish the recording and we'll make everybody laugh. And then I'll go with him to the hospital to see his daughter who had leukemia and was dying. And the day she died, we went there, we took her to the mortuary. We had to go back to the studio again for him to sit down and make people laugh. Nobody knew what was going on. That's the life of broadcasters most times. So you need a partner and a family that will always be there for you, no matter what happens. Be prayerful. Thank God everything for all your success. Because at the end of the day, nothing works without the hand of God. But remember also that the Lord helps those who help themselves. Spend all your time on your knees and you don't go out there and walk. The Lord will not help you. But remember too that when you go out there, sometimes you'll be subordinate to others. Some people are strength headed. They say, Who, I better let him go to hell. But if you do not learn to follow, the Lord may not give you in a position where you will also lead others. So learn to be loyal and work hard for all those the Lord puts ahead of you. And when you also occupy that position of leadership, please remember like Professor Adedeji did to me, when people do wrong, don't throw um, the book at them. Listen to them, understand where they are coming from and help them. You may be saving a soul and a whole generation of people for that good act to that one person. So don't always be too hard and unflexible. If you don't bend, you break. Let's assume that the Lord has seen your hard work, your sacrifice, your integrity, and all that, and blessed you with success. Please, when you get there, don't just stay there alone. Remember all that's behind you and pull them up with you. Don't be jealous of the success of your subordinates. I was standing one day in front of a production, we're doing some production with Cockrow at dawn. And a boss stopped and about 30 students came out. Ah, it was the height of Cockrow's popularity. Some rushed to Belu, some rushed to Gaga, some rushed to Larry, some rushed to Beatrice. And I stood there, sat there, the producer director, nobody came to me. They didn't know me, I'm not a face person. They only knew the stars. And when they had gone collecting all their signatures and that, one of girl came, came to me. I said, thank God, somebody has recognized me. He said, are you Peter? I said, yes. And then she said, are you not jealous that everybody loves those people and nobody's coming to you? And I said, no, I'm not. It makes me happy that what I created is bringing so much joy to other people. So you benefit if you help others succeed because it will rub off on you. At the end of the day, when you leave this world, your achievements or what people remember you by will not be the number of houses you have, the number of cars you have, but by the number of people's lives that you have touched. I hope as you go, you will remember a number of these things and thank God every day you wake up and you breathe the air and say, Lord, I thank you, but give me the strength to be like others who have succeeded and help this country to grow even better. Thank you for listening. May God bless you. That was Olorogun Peter Hugo. Please let us give him a wonderful thank you very much, sir. Can I say, Mingwa?
Secondly, can thank you very much for developing Niger State. Thank you for going there. That is my place, Niger State. Thank you very much, Olorogun, Tita, Igo. And the wife is over there, the wife. Mrs. Peter, you go. Please, can you stand up so that we recognize you? That's beautiful, beautiful. That's how for you. Yes, woman, woman. Thank you very much. That's Mrs. Peter, you go. Thank you for taking care of him. We give glory to God. Before I give out, let me quickly inform you that some universities, did give us some goodwill messages. Number one, Federal University of Technology, Akure. Please let me, let us clap for Air Futa. They have been our good sister, uh, uh, sister university. The next one is Mountain Top University, kilometer 12, Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Let's clap for them. That's Mountain Top. And the last one is Admiralty University Ibusa, near Asaba. Let's clap for, thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you, Sir Registrar. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please, we have to recognize some persons. Permit us for doing this late. We have Eta Justice CD. Boji Mohammed, one, is the Emir of Lafia, Nasarawa State. Please, can we appreciate him for coming? He's a retired justice of the Supreme Court, the Chancellor of River State University, the Chancellor of Federal University, Otuke. So on his way is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we put our hands together for them? We have in our midst, Olorogun Dr. Oscar C.J. Ibru, J.P. Plus Plus. Thank you, sir, for coming. Wife Chief Webedia Macaulay, in our midst this morning. Thank you, sir, for coming. We have the entourage of Olorogun Architect, Charles Majoro, those who came with him, their His Royal Majesty King Duku II. You're welcome, sir. We have Chief Peter Femi, we have Prince Toby Daffy, Marcos Ekuri. His Royal Majesty, the OV of Uwe is also here. Also recognize all traditional rulers who are seated in our midst this morning. Wherever you are, we are highly welcome. We have Mr. Chuono, Mr. Marvel Odieti, and Joshua Adamuri. All these are the entourage of Ologun architect Charles Majoro. We have in our midst the Vice Chancellor of Delta State University, Abraka, Professor Andy Aguiaga, is here represented by Professor Ochuku Anomor Haro is the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academics representing the Vice Chancellor. You are welcome, sir. We also have a representative of the Registrar of the Delta State University of Abraka, Mrs. Peace Ubido, is re representing the Registrar, Mrs. Rufiana Ufiofio. We have Mrs. Ian Jumbo, the Deputy Director of Academic Affairs representative of the Principal Chief Executive Petroleum Training Institute, EFRU. You're welcome, sir. We have Sanusi AR, Director, NYSC South-South Area Office, Asaba, representing the Director General, NYSC Brigadier General, Shoaibu Ibrahim. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we really appreciate these ones that were... <laughs>
Thank you very much. We shall now go over to the second lecture. I want to introduce my second, Mr. Ibel Otachi, to do this announcement. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we want to use this opportunity to welcome the orator of the American and Sisi Library University, Dr. Benson Uhuru, to take the citation of the second paper presenter for today. Can you make your hands bigger for him as he walked on the podium to make this citation? You can celebrate him with your hands. Make it bigger for him. Thank you. Thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocols respectfully observed. It gives me great honor and pleasure once again to be in front of you to yet again do the citation and professional profile of an African giant, I dare say a global giant, a colossus, an icon, of great repute, a man who has cut his teeth across various sectors and industries, highly respected and regarded across various nations of the world. Today, we have a global icon with us and a man who rose through the ranks to become one of Nigerians' most successful architects in his profession. Ladies and gentlemen, with a very warm applause, I present to you architect Olorogu Organovo Charles Majoro. Let's put our hands together for him as I do his citation. Please keep clapping till he comes to the microphone and just stands by me while I do his citation. The citation and professional profile of architect Olorogu Organovo Charles Majoro. B A C M U R P P P N I A P P A U A and F I O D. You will know what all of that stands for. Those are those are the professional credentials that we are going to unveil very shortly. He is a principal partner and founder of the ADEC Nigerian Architects and the Majoro Partnership Architects, Planners, and Engineers. A little background about our guest speaker, who will be speaking to us shortly. He is a consummate professional, a technocrat, and an intellectual power bank, an urban and regional planner of great repute, and an architect for excellence who has contributed and continues to contribute immensely to the development and practice of architecture in Nigeria, in Africa, and across the world. Let's put our hands together for him. Our royal fathers, the royal majesties, the Uvie of Uvia Kingdom and the Uvie of Efroto Kingdom, with all due respect, I doff my heart for you, sirs. Today, we celebrate the blessings of God in Roboland because indeed it is good to celebrate our icons while they are alive. And I'm very happy and thank our mother, the president of the Mike Sisla Hebrew University, our chancellor for as part of legacies in remembering our father, the giant Olorogo Michael Hebrew of blessed memory that today we are also celebrating men who live to experience his legacies and can firsthand testify of the legend and the great man, our father, the great Olorogo Michael Ibru, who he was. Our guest speaker, architect Olorogo Charles Majoro, is an Urobo man of Ekregeta Abraka, Ethiopia's local government area of Delta State where he was born, February 6, 
1946. His impact has been felt across the nations of the world, especially his landmark contributions and projects across various states in Nigeria, cutting across Delta, Edo, Lagos, Oyo, Kaduna, Enugu, amongst others. He has also attracted international acclaim by deploying his expertise in various capacities across other nations, including the nation of Egypt, Kenya, Sri Lanka, and Canada. Now, these are remarkable works of his professional powers in terms of the architect's landscape and his impact across various nations, both in Africa and across the world. Let's put our hands together for him. He began his professional career with the Niger Consultants, where he rose to become an associate partner between 1972 and 1974. He further moved on to found the ADEC Nigeria Architects and Marjoro Partnerships, architects, planners, and engineers, where he served as principal partner since 1974 to date. Our guest speaker this morning had had an illustrious and fulfilling career that has spanned over 45 years as an architect, planner, and project manager. Let's put our hands together for him. Some of his landmark projects and clientele cut across both the public and the private sector, including blue chip companies, private organizations, and individuals in Nigeria and across the world. He has further brought his proficiency and experience to bear in various professional bodies where he served to advance the practice of architecture. Some of these include African Union of Architects, AUA, where he served as a secretary general from 1985 to 1995. And he became president of the African Union of Architects between 1995 to 1998. That's no small feat. Let's put our hands together for him. He also served as the registrar between 1983 to 1994 of the Architects Registration Council of Nigeria, ARCON, and the Nigerian Institute of Architects, where he would serve the secretary Board of Architectural Education from 1975 to 1981, Honorary General Secretary from 1981 to 1987, and he rose to become president of the Nigerian Institute of Architects between 1993 to 1995. Let's put our hands together for him. He represented the Nigerian Institute of Architects as a resource person in the restructuring of the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing in 1999. And recently, he was a distinguished lecturer at the 60th anniversary of the Institute of the Nigerian Institute of Architects, where he delivered a lecture titled, The Dilemma of Relevance. Those of you who participated in that lecture, you will testify that that presentation was truly world-class and was given a standing ovation. Let's appreciate our guest lecturer one more time. Beyond his professional contributions and accomplishments, Olorogo Charles Majoro is a bright and shining light whose influence and impact have been felt at the grassroots and his local constituencies, including his alma mater, the Government College Ugeli. He served as a country. I know we have government colleagues, um, old boys here, and I know they can testify. Can I hear you testify? He served as the secretary of the Lagos branch of the College Old Boys Association from 1980 to 1986. And in 2019, ladies and gentlemen, he became the president general worldwide of the Old Boys Association Government College Ugeli, a position he holds till date. So all government college boys are here represented because the president general worldwide is standing right in front of us. He is 
an accomplished professional by every means and every platform. He's received all kinds of awards, and um, a few of them is the Delta State Government of Nigeria Excellence Award for contribution to the built environment and development control in the states. That was in 1997. He also received the City Council of Nairobi, Kenya, Award of Excellence in June 2001. Spinal Cord Injuries Association of Nigerian Gold Service Award for providing pro bono professional services to the building of a huge center for the treatment and settlement of the disabled in our society. This was on the 16th September 1999. He's a devout Christian and a member of the Church of Nigerian Anglican Communion and received the award of honor in recognition of his contribution to its growth and development on the 5th April 2014. He's also received the Distinguished Service Award of the Lukwejus Lions Club of Lagos, the Delta State Government between 1978 and 1990, and of course, the Urubu Progress Union, where he served as a past Vice President General in 2013. And today, we celebrate him. He is the Orarivie Abraka Olorogun Tense of the Abraka Kingdom, and he's the Egbo of Abraka. He is also a chief, ten, a chief ten of the Efronto Kingdom, where he is the Udumese Rovi of Efronto Kingdom. And you can see that uh, our father, His Royal Majesty King Duku, is here, you know, to celebrate with one of his renowned and highly respected chiefs. Um, Orogo Majuro is a nationalist and a polyglot traveler. Uh, when you hear the word polyglot, it means that just like I introduced um, my father, uh, Mr. Peter Eagle. Peter Eagle is also a polyglot, a person who, who travels quite often and they speak over four languages. Mr. Peter Eagle speaks eight languages and our guest speaker also speaks multiple languages and he's bilingual, multilingual, and he travels all over the world playing golf and you know, fraternizing with people of the world across various tribes and various culture. He also speaks in Hausa, as well as in Urobo, in English, in Shekiri, Yoruba, and French, and also a smart train of Igbo. Olorogo Majuro enjoys playing golf. He's an avid golfer, uh, for those of us who know him. Uh, he also belongs to the Ikoi Club, where I belong to, uh, and he chairs a number of the committees at the club. He loves swimming. He loves studying of languages, music, engaging in current affairs, and amateur photography. He's happily married with children to his wife, Carol, and they are blessed, you know, uh, to the glory of God. Let me quickly also say that the man that is in front of you is a man who personally shaped my life and my destiny. I am a student of his school of excellence. And the success I have recorded in life today is as a result of being under his mentorship and leadership. Um, I have had the privilege, the very rare privilege, to serve under him in the last two decades of my life. And I am a testimony of the impact that being a mentee to a man of his class can result in. I'm a partner in a global firm, Ernst & Young, one of the big four accounting firms in the world. And it was not a small achievement but I want to use this opportunity to say a big thank you to you, my father. Thank you very much for all that you've done to shape me and to make me a success that I'm standing in front of this great audience today. And it's a rare privilege to be introducing you and giving your citation. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest speaker, architect Charles Oganevo Majuro, will be talking to us on the Nigeria of the future. Let's put our hands together for him and give him a resounding applause. Thank you very much. First, I must remove my mask. So I don't become a masquerade in front of you. The Chancellor, Senate, you look, my chiefs, my the kings, the students, 
all other protocols observed. I don't want to go beyond the university system. And thank you very much, um, Benson. I also hold you in very high esteem. You are a star of the future. In fact, a star of now, not the future. I am deeply honored to be invited to the Michael and Cicely B University to be the 2021 Convocation keynote uh, speaker. Speaking at Ivory Towers to the academia and the high echelon of society is a recognition to be cherished by any person who has mounted the public speaking podium anywhere in the world. This is a young university of five years, but its foundation and take off strides epitomize its zeal, integrity, and class the founders have shown in other various fields of endeavor. Like Peter did, let me just tell you a little bit about me, although I think uh, Benson has spoken quite a lot. I, I don't come from, I come from a fairly comfortable family, uh, by all measure, uh, my Juro family, my father were not, were quite comfortable. But my father died when I was 13 years old and I was in government college, Ugele. But I think I was quite brilliant. And uh, although Ugele and then Bende were then in a, in Western region, uh, from among over a thousand Like I was saying, I went to Government College Ugele on a scholarship for the Western region because I was in school up to when uh, Bendel State was uh, created in 63. And I also uh, went to, I should have gone to university earlier, but the war caught up with some of us in uh, Bendel. I left Lagos to come to spend some time over here with. Uh, my people, and I taught in four schools in uh, two years. That means I was a I was a sought after student. There were very few people who could teach mathematics, and I had to teach them to the school cell level at that time during the war. I remember I taught at the CFM 
before this academy, and I had to cross that river, the Atenere, with two pens, with my bicycle. But she be Christian. They say men don't show up at her. Let's say the two children were born said now for another man. But the but I suspect foul play. I suspect say they see another man. Let's say one of one of the whoever is talking, we can hear you. Ladies and gentlemen, we announced the arrival of uh, a very distinguished personality. He has just walked in with his entourage. We are talking of no other person than the Emir of Lafian, Nasarawa State, retired Justice Sidi Bagi Mohammed I, 
He's uh, a retired justice of the Supreme Court. He's the chancellor of River State University, also the chancellor of Federal University, Utpuki. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the pleasure and the honor to welcome you to Michael Assis Library University. We are glad to have you, sir. Thank you, sir. Emia, you are welcome. Uh, I was just giving a big background of, uh, before I go into the, the body of my speech, about uh, a little span of my life. And uh, by the time I got to ABU, I studied in Amadou Bello University, Zaria. Um, I just escaped from the war, in, uh, then through Sapele, and I got to Zaria penniless. Um, and uh, I reported to the student affairs officer who was Dr. Abashia at that time. And I'd only paid, I only had 10 pounds to deposit for a school fee of 200 pounds. And he asked me whether I had come to a modern school or university. In the friends of other students, I had to kneel down under that mango uh, tree in front of the vice chancellor office in Samaru and told me there's no way I was going to go back. I just survived the war. I went two days, two, three days through the creeks, through the bank of Coco, to get to Lagos and then to Zaya. There was no way I was going to go back. And I said, okay, he will allow me to enter the school for one month. And that's how I entered the Department of Architecture at Madibel University in 1967. And uh, when I started, all the lecturers were whites at that time. There were no other universities to study architecture in Nigeria except Amadibel University. They had only four universities in Nigeria at that time. The other one, Nusuka, had been closed down because the war was on. But after the first two months, Professor Kidd, who was the dean, said that uh, I should be allowed to stay. And the department collected money from their subvention and paid my school fees for the first term. So that was the adventure I went through in ABU. By the end of the first year, of course, I'd uh, shown my metal, and then I, I got a federal government scholarship. And so I finished uh, all my education from the free primary school of Awolo War to the uh, Western Region Scholarship for, to Government College of Ugeli, and finally federal government scholarship to do architecture. The rest is history. I also need to talk about why I'm particularly happy to be here. I'm also a good uh, pupil of Chief Michael Hebrew. He is somebody I admired so much that I used to go everywhere to see him. He called me up, and I was the Secretary General of the Delta State, Delta State Movement that we have today for nine years, working with him on, at six Louis Solomon Close and also at his place on 20 uh, Queens Drive. And, in fact, if he had any problems, little things, he would ask me to even come to the bedroom to help with licking roofs and stuff like this. But these kids now were very small children then. And he had a lovely, devoted wife, very devoted and obedient and fantastic wife in the place of Mrs. Cecilia Ebro. I drop my hat for you. I'm talking from inner knowledge. I don't know if you remember. And he will ensure that I come and sit down with him to eat to see, which I couldn't eat. But we'll eat together, and she will serve the husband with so much love and obedience. And when the house got a bit old, he asked me to redesign that frontal. The addition to 20 uh, Queens Drive, which you all see now, I designed it for Chief Michael. It will be free of charge. And he got an Italian. Uh, worker you know, to stay there and build it. And I worked with him. I think I found his name, but we worked together and I also did it for free for him. And we, I was also his assistant when he was involved in the Libra Convention. Chief Cecilia Hebrew will cook, freeze the food, and we'll put it in one aero contractor's flight, those small ticket planes, and we'll fly with those planes and land at the back of the house somewhere. I don't know where it is now. In, a, in this town, Baruto, and we'll feed the people 
for the liberal convention. I was that involved with him and with the data state movement with Dr. Uh, Chief uh, Dio Dafinune, with um, uh, Chief uh, of uh, Boloko, Dr. Soho and others. I worked with them for the creation of this state and we replied with Tony um, Ojibo and um, Mr. Uh, um, Mr. Okudu, we will write as they reply. The other people wrote, we will reply. We we'll type it in, in six groups and reply to them, those who are opposed to the creation of Delta State. And when the state was about to be created, they asked me, they called me to Fokados Road in Apapa. Young man, what do you want? I said, I don't want anything. I just want us to be free as Delta people. And I'm happy to be anonymous and to be an architect. I don't seek, I do not want My public I don't want public appointment. I don't want to have any election. Just let me be as a young architect. And that's what I've remained till now. Praise God. Can we rise to at least give honor to that great man? He was so handsome. He was so tall. He was such a nice person. I loved him and served him because I had so much respect for him. Chief Michael Christopher. Nigeria, Hebrew, who was born on Christmas Day, which was a significant birthday. Just a minute of silence, please. May his gentle soul rest in perfect peace. He will have been 91 years this year. Praise God. Where today Harva belongs to the graduating class of 2021, sorry for the digression, but I had to say it, who have made serious efforts, burned the provider midnight or passed their examinations and satisfied their very tough lecturers in all the aspects of their study to enable them to sit down resplendent in their costumes with smiles on their memorable day of convocation. Your parents, fathers and mothers, graduates, whose efforts and contributions played major roles in your upbringing up to this stage of graduation also deserve a big round of applause. Can you students give your parents a round of applause? Happy graduates, please stand, locate, and wave to your respective parents at this juncture and say thank you, or miigwa, if you can, if you, can, if you know where they are. Where you are, Very good. You could not have done this without their prayers, time, and money. I trust that in arriving at this topic, the Nigeria of the future, the university administration must have dug deep, particularly because of its relevance to the times that Nigeria now finds itself as a nation. The body on me as a speaker is to say something from which the students graduates and maybe the faculty can retain snipers for future consideration. If speaker after speaker do not leave something behind, then it will be difficult to justify the regular invitation of speakers to convocation ceremonies in this university. The two key words in the topic of my speech are Nigeria and future. These two words are interesting and intertwined as a conceptual ball rapidly in motion, continuously evolving and mutating. Whereas the formation characteristics and definition of the former, which is Nigeria, can be accurately situated, its future status is a difficult riddle to predict. The same goes for the concept of future. We are due to constant motion the determination of the measure of time from origin to destination cannot be accurately made in real time. This address will therefore make certain reasonable assumptions and projections to enable me to situate the approximate period which I can call future. As I was writing this paper and comparing our nation to others which came into existence at about the same time as ours, I noted the marked deficit in our current developments. I could not help but wonder 
if it is slightly possible that Nigeria has missed a chapter of the human story in its development. Now, Nigeria, taking a brief look into the political history of the nation state Nigeria, one can say that its origin was dominated by a struggle for freedom between 1922 and 1959. Notable Nigerians like Sir Hubbard Macaulay, Dr. Unnamde Azikwe, and Haji Amadu Bello, Chief Antonio Nahoro, were the fathers of Nigerian nationalism, which pushed, pushed the British to give some concessions to Nigerians in the forms of concessions like the Clifford Constitution of 1922, the Richards Constitution of 1946, the McPherson Constitution of 1951, and the Little Tin Constitution of 1954. I really cannot talk about the future of Nigeria without giving you a little snippet of the past, the present, and then the future. Eventually, as we all know, October 1960, Nigeria became self-governing from British colonial rule. I was administered at the center by the federal government and three regional governments in the east, west, and north. In 1963, the Midwest region was carved out of the Western region, making a federation of four regions. During this first republic, a parliamentary system of government was in operation. This lasted till January 1966, when the military came into governance. Then came the Second Republic, where the president was Alaji Shari, and Nigeria adopted the presidential system of government with an executive president. This administration was in power until 1983, when it was about in the coup, and the military once again came to governance. In Nigeria, we started another round of military governance until 1960, when, um, after Prime um, uh, became head of state in 1985, put in place an interim civilian government charged with conducting elections. This interim administration lasted for only three months, when it was replaced by General Sani Abacha. The Abacha's government ruled the country from 93 to 98, when the head of state solely died in June 1998. With the sudden death of General Abacha in June 1998, Abu Abacha headed the new military administration. The Abacha announced and implemented a political transition program that ushered in a new civil government in May 1999, precisely in less than one year. With all these upheavals, it is not rocket science to locate the excuse in inverted commas for our stunted growth between 1966 and 1999, a period of 30 years that included an avoidable three years of a bloody civil war, was still doing a, a poor job of playing catch up as a nation since that time. Now, in 1960, the Indices put Nigeria at par with countries like Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia. But today, due to many decades of misadministration and elevation of ethnic and religious factors into governance, coupled with the intrusion of the military into our body politics, we are regressed as a nation in all parameters of measurement. The chronicle of the locust years were replete with circumstances that are, on high side, unfortunate, avoidable, and should form part of the history that you graduates must imbibe going forward. Thankfully, that discussion is way beyond this, the scope of this my speech. So I, I, I take it that you, you do that later on. Subject first to define and codify the premises and boundaries of that construct called Nigeria as the basis of study of its future. And Jerry has had a guess, nay, a projection of its state of at a date that we can all agree as the beginning of Nigeria before embarking on a, a, a journey into its future. We all know the beginning 1960. We will know the future as we go ahead. While other nations are battling with artificial intelligence, speed of travel, and the mysteries of outer space, and advancement in the science of procreation and the origin of matter, we in Nigeria are enmeshed, indeed ensnared in the primordial nature of homo sapiens, subsistence farming, and other related issues long cataloged and submerged into catacombs of irrelevance. Owing to our attitudinal deficiency, our democracy appears to be a punishment on us 
rather than a happy experience of debate of ideas and healthy competition for votes. Where we are now as a nation requires charismatic and visionary leadership with the future in mind, like President Kagame, who reconciled the people of Rwanda after the 1994 genocide. We are presently at this stage, and the choice we make now shall determine the direction of this country. If Nigeria is expecting a great future based on prophecies of pastors, imams, and the like, without adequate planning, preparation, preparation and key performance indices, while adopting, hoping to compete at the same level with the likes of Singapore, we must think again and fast. If we keep emphasizing ethnicity and religion, we cannot have a great future as a nation. Our governance economy is indeed in need of retooling. One simple concept is emerging. Why don't we merge our seasons with our budget cycle for efficient implementation? The budget comes, by the time it's finishing, the rains, uh, some of the rains are here, and by the time one budget comes, the year is ended, and then another budget starts. Where are the usual prospective national plans that we should have? Indeed, the annual budget reads like a 12 months national plan, interrupted and interjected with provisional budget in injections that only muddy the waters of even the annual budget itself. The budgets them, themselves are only about the, the ways of distributing and spending of oil wealth and proceeds from rental income. When will we put an end to the, um, the almighty monthly fact, that ceremony they have every month in Abuja, where they sit down and distribute money? That discourages other areas who may otherwise have been productive. Every month we go somewhere and money is divided. If I'm sure I'm going to get the same amount of money every month, why didn't I need to bother to create wealth for myself? We can borrow a leaf from the Indian example. They are strategy for improving and protecting their national production was to write the Indian handbook of local production and freely distribute it. Leveraging on their over 1.2 billion population, they negotiated with foreigners to include Indians in their production and distribution of goods for the Indian market after first shutting down the import uh, gate. They first shut the place down and said, okay, we have a book, we have learned. If you are going to come in, we must be involved in a meaningful way in the production and distribution. There is no drug you are making the West I want today that India does not insist that they must make an Indian concept of it cheaper for them, effective for the economy. We just import. A very appropriate entrepreneurship topic for current students and graduates of this job. That's something that we do respect. The eggheads here can think about for the future of this school. Also is the historical collapse of Niger, of Naira, from 50 Kubo to 520. I think it's about 530 now. 546 to the dollar. So it's moving in the other direction. Now, the example of Rwanda, they own, they will own hotels in America and Dubai as avenues of increasing their foreign exchange. Nigeria must set a threshold of leadership capability at all tiers of governance. This threshold must not only be achievable given our circumstances, but shall also be a pre-qualification for contesting for leadership. No round of applause for that one. <laughs> Despondency is setting in, and such a feeling of national failure is not helpful. Efforts were made to stem the collapse of the Nigerian educational system. If Nigerians must go abroad to study, we should discourage students from going to such places like Ghana, Kotonu, Romania, etc whose educational standards should not in any way be better than ours. I mean, look at this place. It's not the size of the university, but you can see from the hallowed halls here that there's an attempt, indeed, a vision to make a university a place where you can get good education. Please, round of applause for this university. If you have a place like this, why should you go to a one-box um, university in Accra? They have them in um, containers. 
and uh, you just go there, and after two years you pay, you get a degree. Why can't we invest our time and energy in places like this? Praise the Lord. Let me tell you that the highest number of graduates from any family in America is a Nigerian family. In America, over 5,000 medical doctors have left Nigeria in this year. Of the 96 medical students who graduated from Howard University, 46 were Nigerian and they were even female. So we have the brains, we have the people, we have the institution. Why must we put our money somewhere else? In other aspects of our national life, Nigeria is also dealing with Boko Haram, headsmen, kidnapping, security, religious divides, elections are coming and everybody's in trepidation, ethnic and sectional centrifugal pools, poverty, hunger, economic issues. Why? When are we going to get out of this? When are we going to be able to print our future? In sports, which is also a very easy way to get things done. America went with a few officials and they got more gold medals than Nigeria that went with 60 plus officials. So there's something wrong somewhere in the way we do things. And sports in itself, if we invest in it, it's a great way of making people happy, people exercise and releasing the tension from the hovers in which they are living. Nigeria budgets $8 per annum for the health of its citizens, $8. While in Europe, a cow gets two dollars per day as subsidy. I repeat, our health budget is eight dollars per annum for every Nigerian. Well, and in Europe, the a, the cow they have as their livestock gets a budget of two dollars per day. So you can do the arithmetic. We have a low ranking in the index of powerful passports in, in relation to other nations. Sometimes when you travel abroad, that when you flash that green, you know, that green passport, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Now, Nigeria is a country with a higher number of people in absolute poverty than even India, though we have one seventh of the population of India. Our median age is about 18. That's a fantastic potential to have. But how are we harnessing it for the future? We have to think. On current population trends, Nigeria will be the third most populous country in the world in about 30 years because we're not even controlling you know, our population growth. Our GDP is also going down in relation to our population. And our human development index, we are 161 out of 189 countries. Uh, the only countries we, are, we can beat are countries like uh, uh, you know, maybe Somalia, which are non countries really, uh, very decrepit countries that we can uh, com compete with. Therefore, and I give a table of the Arden Arras uh, crashed in recent times. Now, I need to do that to give us a picture of where we are. Now, the future. What is future? The future as a concept as Elias said, it's an indefinite date. It varies from minute to infinity, from immediate to near, and from there to eternity. So it's a long thing to talk about. You just want to say future. What is future? I need to situate that definition before I can talk to my respected audience and the graduates. It becomes more complicated when you are obliged to measure it against another precept, which itself is in progression or is in regression or in stagnation. How do we define future in terms of the scale of time as a singular quantum of an element? Or is it in the terms of the development of the variety of strands of the human state? We must first define and codify the premises and boundaries of that construct to be able to study the epochs earlier defined before. So hazarding a guess, nay a projection of this state to a date, we can all agree, is the beginning of the future. We have to find and agree for this speech. We cannot project the perspective to infinity. We just can't do that. That means there's no end. Neither can we tranche it in the temporal terms of economic development planners, which are usually predetermined. 
oh, the future is going to be uh, five years time or 20 years. How do you do that? The future can be very definitive in the minds of planners. But when we refer to same to the human scale, it can either be personal, that's for me and for you, in terms of a lifespan or generic in terms of the calendar of events that have taken place or that are happening or shall come to pass in the life of a nation. Since this nation is a living organism with a definite birth date, a continuum of existence and aging in real time, and a project ad infinitum till a time when it either ceases to be an entity, God forbid, definable as a geographical object with current borders, or when this part of this globe containing our country evolves to the extent that the concept of nationhood therefore mutates beyond recognition. I hope, am I making some sense? For a nation to have a future, it must have a definite path of growth and learning in the spiritual, in the biological, and the virtual realms. I repeat, for a nation to have a future, it must have paths of growth, other in learning, have a learning future, spiritual, as you develop spiritually, and in the virtual realm. Whereas the first two are familiar, that is, a learning and spiritual and learning, the virtual realm speaks to the creation of systems and institutions, systems which can be improved upon by their interface with others. The most common of these are ICT, culture, tradition, laws, morals, checks, and balances. These will continue to grow and mutate with age and the fluctuation of time. What I'm trying to say is that whereas we can talk about science and learning, we can also talk about the spiritual, yourself and your God. The other issues which I call virtual are the ones that we need to worry about now. And they have a future and as a consequence can influence the fortunes of their fiscal space. And that future realm affects the fortunes of nations of even your own personal office, your ethnic group, your towns, your conventions, and even your homes. In these circumstances, time is not that relevant because it is such a variable coefficient and has become just a speck among the determinant factors which are significant for measurement of the concept of future. The simplest prediction of a time-based future is the daily event of a day turning to night and vice versa. At one, at one point in the globe, there is sunlight. So are other parts at the same time in darkness. Therefore, you may make your own future soon as the sun shines, knowing that the night is approaching. And the next part, indeed, the generation must have its opportunity in the limelight. If you read in the book of John 9, 4, those who are Bible students, you will see what I'm talking about when Jesus talked about it. Make your time quickly as it's night, because the day is coming. Or make it angry as the day, night is coming. For the sake of this speech, I have coined two phrases to identify two futures, to make it easier. One I call future proxima, that's proximate future. And the other I call future optima. So by the time we refer to those two, maybe it is easier for us to say which future we shall be defining for Nigeria. The future proxima is a measure of two semesters of five years. I'm using semester because I'm in a university environment. You know, this is where I ought to be, really. Um, <laughs> because we are used to semesters. Um, each, uh, while the future optimal shall be a single period of five years, or one period, two periods to make 10 years, beyond the second milestone of the proximal future. In essence, the future shall be a cumulative period, therefore, of 20 years from now, ending in 2041. I will tell you why I can't go beyond 2041. The future proximal refers to what in daily parlance we refer to as medium or immediate future. While future optimal is the long term, any other future or futures beyond the horizontal horizon stands outside the scope of these dimensions. And we shall have to leave that to astrologers. 
because even to do the five years is not easy. To go beyond 20 years, I think you need suit sayers for Nigeria. Am I correct? In the light of the foregoing and recent history, one can safely say that the future of the Nigerian state can be projected but cannot be accurately predicted beyond one semester or five years each. That means as we sit here now, we can project for the next five years, but we cannot predict. Let me tell you why. The future of Niger can also be looked at as the evolution of a living thing that has a learning or experience capability in its interface with the natural environment. So unpredictable is life in Nigeria that it cannot be too far from the Hobbesian def definition that says, is it up there? There. The life of a man, if solitary, in the state of nature is poor, nasty, brutish, and short. That's what Professor Hobbes said. Life expectancy used to be 47 years, but must now be, in, because of uh, downgraded to 40, when you factor in the incidentals from insecurity, poverty, upheaval, COVID-19, God forbid that disease, you know, we have reduced it from 40, 47 to 40. But be warned that the Arab Springs started in Tunisia after just one incident of self-immolation. Somebody just burnt herself or himself. That's what started the Arab Springs. So they couldn't have predicted that. No matter how deep the lethargy, one simple crisis can cause a revision of one's projection of the future. Do you remember NSAS? It happened not far from here. It started as a small affair, but thankfully, it has not caused more civil disorder to God. Thank to God. In the future, how many of our children of the current and next generation are ready to take over from us? How many of them are ready to take over from the leadership? Are the youths prepared to take the baton? Can you say I, the youth? They're not even speaking. Are the youth prepared to take the baton? Can you raise your hand if you're prepared to take the baton? Okay. All right. The event that shall play key roles in the future of Nigeria as follows. National security. 2023 elections. Open grazing. Agric and food prices. Referendum. Our constitution. Restructuring. COVID-19. Fair price power supply. Educational calendar. NYC and the safety of coppers. Unemployment. ICT. Drug abuse. Elections, international affairs, native and diaspora Nigeria interface. That I will come to later on. Because there are two Nigerians now. There's a native Nigerian, and whether you like it or not, there's a diaspora Nigerian, a very powerful force that's growing day by day. Going forward, the decisions, choices, and actions that Nigeria and Nigerians take at this point will determine the future of Nigeria. The prediction that Nigeria will cease to be a nation by 2015 did not come to pass, though the signs are still there. The Western world's prediction of how Nigerians have been dying on the streets from COVID has not come to pass, though we are not out of the woods yet. Generally, we still need to tread softly and very carefully for the sake of the future of our nation. The future of Nigeria is an option of two choices. Are, you know, akin to the geological term alacrogen in play technologies. technologies. It has uh, cross activities beyond our control or definitive human prediction. The future path can follow either the failed rift or the major oceanic rift. Away from home, the Nigerian diaspora in many parts of the world has contributed to a reputation as being people who are highly educated, and innovative, from medicine to music, home and away. Nigerians believe we have got the source, and we're not afraid to tell you. Now, I've given you a background. I need to now address the new graduates. A popular Arabic proverb states, young men 
should write the bad things that are done to them in the sand, but write the good things that happen to you, to you on a piece of marble. I repeat, if anything that happened to you while studying up to this stage in your life, write it in sand. And any good things that happen to you while you are here, write it in marble. That means more attention should be placed or fixed on the good things rather than what has happened to you. Arm yourselves with this so that you can start your post graduation life on a new clean slate. The Nigeria you are going to spend your working life with has great hopes for economic growth. I hate to say this, but the university education has now become just like a visa. Visas do not guarantee you success at your destination. They don't guarantee you employment. With your education, you still have to decide which economy you want to key into. So long as there's good governance to create an enable environment, select credible leadership of, at all strata of governance and provide security and a sense of pride in our nation. And as, so long as you graduates do the following, and I'm going to repeat slowly, you also need to do the following. Even the country will give you a good enabling environment, you also want you have to search for mentors. We are examples of those who sought for mentors. Aspire to catch the wind of inspiration. Inspiration will come to you in so many places. Just touch it down because it quickly goes away. It can even come to you in a dream. And if you are spiritual, the Holy Spirit can give it to you in many ways. How I decided to study architecture today is still a mystery to me and to my family because I'm supposed to be an engineer. I don't know why I decided that I would study architecture and I feel it when I was in worry, just as the war was about to start. That's, that's what I wanted to study. I could hardly pronounce it that I, I thought it was architecture. But I know it's architecture now. <laughs> I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine my life not being an architect. You know, my son is an architect. First, an architect. Brother, his wife. My son's wife is an architect. My brother, my niece is an architect. It's just we just like architecture, not architecture. <laughs> so aspire to catch the inspiration. Invest in quiet moments of reflection. Invest. This is very critical because you're going to make same decisions after the ceremony. Cherish regular moments of deliberate fellowship with colleagues of like minds. Avoid colleagues who are not of your like minds. Now, internalize the notion that the journey of learning just started. And have faith that the fruits of labor, which are available to all who strive, shall not pass you by, in Jesus' name, amen. The brain has a story capacity of 2.5 gigabytes. I don't know how many you needed to pass through university. There's still no space for you to learn. I have some good news for you though. The world economy is now global. We now live in a global, highly competitive village driven by knowledge. The world has evolved into a global knowledge economy that has no patience for ignorance and indolence. The advent of ICT has made it possible for individuals to become economically relevant in ways that were not even possible before. India, a good example, is a rapidly advanced uh, nation because Indians in the diaspora have gone back home. So strive for national and global connectivity with native and diaspora Nigerians. This country's film industry, like Peter Ego said earlier on, is great. For all its flaws, and it's the second largest industry of its kind in the world. And our fintech industry, <laughs> I'm told I have five minutes. Okay. I'll try. <laughs> In choosing your career, know that you need to have a, a niche. If even a lawyer, there's a niche in law. If in medicine, you have a niche. In choosing your niche, remember Maslow's hierarchy of human needs. 
where you think of food, shelter, health, clothing, and work. And also in choosing within there, remember the base of pyramid law of a prakalad. So you must choose between those two to make a, a niche. And God will be with you to make success in Jesus' name. You must be part of the future. Either as a native Nigerian, if, or if you join the train abroad, a diaspora Nigerian, and prepare for the sixth industrial revolution. You must study revolutions, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, where we're in now, and the sixth. So you must leapfrog this in, in, inequalities to be ready for the sixth uh, industrial revolution. You must create your own niche market. Vision a goal. Do not remain stuck in the mode of the social and economic rung of the ladder where you started. There's so much room in the sky. Reach for it. Break the glass ceiling and be present upstairs at the dinner table of the selected before or immediately after the third semester. That is the future optimal. If you choose a career path, know that transactional or trans, uh, transformation leaders is a choice. Be focused. Be miserly with your time. It's expensive and irreplaceable. Your time. There's so many developments coming in the sixth. I will, you can get that in the book and read them up. And then you know which ones can help you to, uh, to grow. If you belong to an established family, you must eschew arrogance and be ready to take those ideas and businesses to the next level, indeed century, rather than always striving to start from scratch. Develop traditional societies, Indians, Asians, and even Yorubas do not start from scratch, but they key into family businesses and reputations and move it to the next level. The oldest continuous university, which was founded in 859 AD in first, has the descendants still continuing with the process? It's my prayer that this university that was started by Michael and Sidebu will have descendants in within the family, in within this great family, to continue the progress of this university beyond their time in Jesus' name. The nation needs just a few a thousand to move forward. One thousand. Graduates, are you prepared to be one of these thousand? Or we can take the title from here and bring the excess from other universities? In the quest for sophistication and survival in the, in the past, in the post-schooling race, do not lose your mother languages. I repeat, do not lose your mother language because it has been scientifically proven to play a major role in the constant development of your brain. If you have lost that language, this is the time to step back and retrieve it. You can also add other languages of your places of future abode. It opens doors in ways you cannot imagine. Do not lose your culture and tradition as it improves your self-esteem and banishes any form of inferiority complex. Stay open. But never allow your being to be uprooted from your humble beginnings. Do not look down on others, others who may not have attained the heights you finally reach. We shall all end up in the same destination, six feet. So be humble. This generation has the greatest opportunity and exposure. But while striving to climb the ladder, they should remember to do some community work in the eradication of drug abuse and ascendancy of the Yahoo business among their age group. It pains my heart that when full young lives are being wasted by drugs like raffine, they call some raffina, some loud, uh, tramadol, codeine, Indian hemp, moly, cocaine. Some youths are also abandoning academies for the law of quick money from internet fraud. Have you heard of HK? HK, that's a new school. Parents are removing secondary school students to enroll in HK. 
They call it hosting kingdom. You see? That school is so popular that people are guaranteed with a laptop and a, one or six months of lessons. They are buying cars and building houses for their mothers and, and, and parents. And they are now saying that education is a scam. God forbid. But if we are looking for that kind of money, then you are not one of those here. It means that most of you who are here are the best of your generation who have not been enslaved by that you know, need for money, money made illegally. But your job doesn't stop here. Your job is also that you should go to your mates and friends who have lost the past and educate them and help them because you talk better with them. You know, the language that they speak today, the kind of pigeon you speak today, some of us cannot even uh, cope. You know, the thing don't cast. Uh, so many things. We can't even follow you. By the time we come back, this, a new one has started. So you people can communicate with your mates to let them know that the gown you are wearing today is a much more honorable way to make money than the quick one they make and some they also end up being crazy. They have to do many things to retain that position. Therefore, I ask, is this uh, Michael and Sister Ibu University Committee, are you ready for leadership in this kind of matter? Are you ready for it? Ugeli Not is the highest consumer of beer in Nigeria. Yes. Dental Central has the highest teenage pregnancy in Nigeria. So it's a, an opportunity and a job for you to do. So when you live here, don't only think about yourself. You have a community labor to do. We have to save this generation. And those of you who are here, I assume have been saved. Praise the Lord. So you have a job to save those people who, have, who haven't seen the light. If you have talent, and you made something, don't keep it to yourself. Somebody built this university to help you. You have a job to do besides feeding your family to help others who have lost the light. You also need to be very careful in the choice, like Peter said, of your spouse. Because whoever is your husband or your wife, in many ways can determine how you succeed going forward. Pray about it and select with care. And God will help you in that choice. I have a list of Nigerians who have made it. I don't want to bore you with that. And in conclusion, we cannot continue to remain a country that will most likely succeed. They describe Nigeria as a country that will most likely succeed. And in our class of 1960, that is nations that gained independence with us, we are still, I think, second to the last. We only senior to uh, uh, Djibouti or some other country. We cannot continue to be a work in progress. We need you people to make Nigeria to have its future now. What is the future? My future um, dream of Nigeria is a future where you have easy and quick transportation. A future where when we're going to have elections, there's no transportation. We all go in there and we choose the best. A future where Nigeria has the best schools and the best health center. A future where you have the, the value for your Naira, where your passport means uh, something it has respect. I've been dreaming of, of that future, but sometimes I'm afraid that I don't want to wake up from that dream by the noise of Okada and the smoke of Okada. I want to wake up from that dream to see to smell sweet flowers in my life and in your life. To you graduates, therefore, I say, think of a vision of Nigeria with good education, good health, good economy, employment, and lack of unemployment, where religion remains the personal conviction and business of individuals and families not the expensive and intrusive occupation of government, where government remains enabler, not the doer, where your green passport is a pride of, to you. My prayer 
is that this should not become a sweet dream. If, as you graduate from that, an American spectator fiction writer once wrote that the future is here, is just not evenly distributed. Place yourself in a position to receive bountifully when the distribution starts. In closing, I again want to congratulate the class of 2021. We are so very proud of you. We also expect so much from you. Good luck to you as you are back on this new chapter in your lives. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for staying on. We wish to recognize some other dignitaries. We have the entourage of the Emir of Lafia, Etah Justice Baji Mohammed. We have the current justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria who came with the Emir, Justice Tijani Abubakar. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. Yes, in that entourage also, we have Mr. Kenneth all the way from the United States of America. You're welcome, sir. Then we have Chief Kenneth Baji, former Minister of Education State, Federal Republic of Nigeria. You are highly welcome, sir. Thank you. We have Chief Ishak Baji, Nigerian Gari Lafia Bari Bari from Nasarawa State. Magaji. Magaji Gari, thank you, sir. We have Professor Akpofuri Rimruke, is the Vice Chancellor. Federal University of Petroleum Resources, Afro. You are welcome, sir. We have Chief Goody Ibru, who has been with us here. Please permit me to recognize the principal officers of this university, headed by Chief Dr. Mrs. Cecilia Ibru, who is the chancellor of this university. You're welcome, ma. Thank you. We have the pro-chancellor, Professor Peter Chewahugo. The Pro Chancellor. We have the Vice Chancellor, Professor Mrs. Ibinka Fuwakbe. We have the Registrar, Dr. Thomas Kolo. We have the Boss, Mr. Christopher Akenroy. And we have the University Librarian, Mrs. Peace Ubu. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we need to take Goodwin messages from four persons before we proceed over of Uwe. We come for his goodwill message, one minute each, please. Then the Emir of Lafia for his goodwill message, the overview of Efroto, and of course, the Vice Chancellor of Fupri. They will be coming to give us their goodwill messages. Ladies and gentlemen, can we have them come for their goodwill messages? So, okay, thank you, sir. Good message, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Um, let me stand on the existing protocol. First of all, we thank God for for today. Uh, for this celebration, and uh, especially our dear wife, Chief Mrs. Dr. Ebro, for holding forth after the death of your husband to keep this university going. God will continue to guide you, protect you for more years to come in Jesus' name. For all the guests that are here, thank you very much for coming, my colleagues, particularly my friend from Lafia. I yesterday I asked after you. But unfortunately, the late Emma was my very good friend too. Thank you very much. I talked to thank you very much for your gift. Well, today is a great day for us, particularly. Uh, this part of uh, Delta, 
the Yorubos are proud of our late uh, son, Hebrew. Like one of the guests uh, later said, he brought wealth, he brought recognition to his people. Of course, Lafia, Yemia of Lafia and all that will not even know that this part of uh, Delta exists. But he brought all of you here, brought Nigeria to his own grassroots. And that is very encouraging. And that is my wish for every one of us. God bless you. Also, small words for the graduates today. You, are, you know, a lot of speakers have advised you, you are going to the world. What we pass through is not what you are going to pass through now. A lot of challenges. But continue to pray to God to guide you. And God will continue to protect and guide you. And be a pride to your parents for this investment given to you. Thank you very much. God bless all of you. Thank you, sir. Your Royal Majesty, the Chancellor of the University, and let me rest on that. It is indeed a very delightful moment for us to be here, to be in your great state. We have seen your state. We have seen the level of development and we are going back with a lot of memories. To say that those of them who had been on the driver's seat in the state must have done very well. We must be proud of them. Let me say quickly, we are in this state, this great state, to honor two people. One of them was introduced, the former Minister of State Education, Kenneth Wagi. Yesterday, he honored his beloved wife, who was elevated as a justice of the Court of Appeal. He made some ceremony and we came in for that. We're also here to honor one of the best, one of our best in Nigeria, Peter Ego. Indeed, I said to him, Peter, you are a very lucky person. Lucky because in the sense that the good Lord decided to keep you up to this time, that you have been celebrated and you are going to see more of it because Nigerians will wake up one day to discover what you have done and your contributions to this country. It is something that is beyond measure, something that you cannot simply quantify. I remember, reminded Peter yesterday that during the days of Kokro Adon, we remember one thing. Anytime that episode was on, I was in a city called Joss on the plateau. When the program is on, the entire city will go dead. You cannot find vehicles moving on the street. Everyone is rushing to get back to watch the next episode. He kept the whole of the country. Not Joss was only an example. But anywhere you find yourself in Nigeria, then it was the same thing. Apart from Kokro Adon, because of his interaction with us, mostly in the northern part of the country, there were some house programs. Most of the people here may not have watched that program, but for us in the north, we had cherished it so much. A touch on the culture of the North, 
where the north then stood for and so on and so forth. And the man behind that all was Peter. And we thought that we will have to do him this honor. We want to thank the chancellor of this university for this great honor done to one of the best of us, one of the ablest when he was on duty. And this is an example. We just listened to the guest speaker, his wonderful words. I'm seeing him for the first time and did not know that we still have such great people in this country. I want to say something, not because I intend to say it, but just two weeks back, Mr. President appointed me as the chairman of the Standing Committee on National Honors. The instruction of Mr. President was that return honor to those national honors. Get the best Nigerians. Let it be the beginning where people can show patriotism, the love of their country. I listen to the speaker and I look at him. I don't have the right to take the decision on my own because I'm only the chair of the standing committee. But if I will be allowed to take that decision, I would have conferred that honor on him. Because of all of those things that he stood for. I've seen a Nigerian, not the other way around. Any opportunity they see, they want to grab. Hold political office, do this and that. What he said today is really instructive. We will go with that in our minds and we'll work with that. I'm also happy because he, I look at him now as a father because I was also a student of Amadou Bello University and an alumni of Amadou Bello. Wherever I, we find them, we are very proud of them. These are some of those things that we will go and continue to remember what we have been able to get from this place. I am so happy to be here. I did not know until this ceremony of the existence of this university, but I'm going back, back to Nasarawa State, back to the other part of the country. And wherever I have an opportunity to say, I will mention about this university. I thank you very much for the honor done to, to us. Thank you very much. May God bless you all. Your Royal Majesties, Madam Chancellor, all members of the academia, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and my distinguished graduating students. It is my privilege to be here on the invitation of the keynote speaker, Olorogo architect O.C. Majuro, the man we call O.C.M. Uh, before now, I could say only Olorogo Michael Libro was my mentor. But as of now, I can say that O.C.M. Is also my mentor. I remember when I just became king and I had no car, he gave me the first car. <laughs> and it was and it was a Jeep. It's a kind man. So whatever he has spoken about today, he spoke from his heart. It's not just being theoretical, even though it sounded very academic, but it's practical. He spoke who he is. I have the privilege of being here because I can tell you that I'm possibly a part owner of this institution. We are members of the Hebrew group, and I happen to be one of the very happy ones who was personally recruited by my uncle, 
Honorable MC O Ibro. The Mama Ibro is the auntie to my own mother in Owo. So I am home. I am home. And I have the privilege of working very closely with the co-founder, Olorogo Dr. MC O Ibro. We started in Ibro Seafoods before I moved on to a merchandising firm called um, WF Clark. And a time came when the brewery here called Super Brew was collapsing. And he identified me as somebody who could rely on for the revival. So he transferred me home to work on the revival of the brewery in 1987. And we did our best. I will revive the brewery then. We even introduced one of the best malt drink in the country at that time called Super Malt, a product I also took to Abidjan. So today I'm here, very proud, very happy that the excellence that characterized the life and times of Olorogo Michael Ebro is still being evidenced here today. The man was not an architect, but I'm sure one of the things that uh, the guest lecturer would have learned from him is that he was also a great designer. Architect, no, not architect now. Olorogo Michael Ebro was a very great designer. He's a man of excellence. He's a man of many parts. Each time we are in management meetings and we're discussing engineering matters, you probably think that Olorogo Michael Ebro read engineering. He's such a very competent person. And sitting in this hall, you could see sign of excellence. The question has been put from the floor by the guest speakers. What are we running to Europe and America to look for? When the replication of the best is taking place here in Agbaroto today. We went to university, not, not like the guest speaker, when they were four universities. I went to university when there were only six universities. And the university then, we are really the best. To the extent that we had students, exchange students coming from America, from Britain, to University of Ibadan to study. So it's a very sad incidence today that our children are now going to some mushroom private institution in Ghana. And the parents are happy that the children have traveled abroad to study. That is not education. They are not getting education. We have the best here. The best is evolving here. So it is my hope that the standard that Olorugu Michael Ibru would have seen is maintained, improved upon by the chancellor. That is the greatest, greatest heritage that the man Olorugu Michael Ibru would love to be remembered for. Especially when the institution is in his homeland. This will serve as a monument forever to the name Michael Ibro. Those days in our time, he used to be remembered as a fish man. Every nook and cranny you went to in Nigeria, you called Ibro fish. He was recognized. So let it be the case from now on too, that the children that are graduating today and the ones that have graduated before and the ones that are going to graduate tomorrow, we keep that flag flying. That when they go out and say, I'm from Olorogu, Sicilia, Michael, Hebrew University, they will say, yes, we know you. They will be known by their contributions to the society. They will be known for the excellence that they have come to represent. 
I wish to congratulate the guest speakers today for the excellent job they have done. They fit into the mode of the academia. And to the students who are graduating today, I wish you good luck and the best of everything that you desire. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. We are very, very grateful. We will briefly give to the Vice Chancellor of Footprint to give us his goodwill message. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Orator. I, I don't know where to start. I think I should go to the traditional rulers first. The traditional rulers here present. I salute you, the Chancellor. I'm honored to be here. The Pro Chancellor, it is my pleasure, and the distinguished Vice Chancellor and distinguished members of Senate. I bring good tidings from the Federal University of Petroleum Resources a full Delta State to congratulate you on the second and the third convocator ceremony of this great university. The testimony abounds, the evidence are seen. The university said it, the university council and the university management of students say, I should tell you congratulations. Once again, congratulations, man. I hereby present the scroll. Thank you, sir, Mr. Vice Chancellor. I wish to hand over to the registrar to continue with the rest of the program. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Festus Agnesi. Let's laugh for him for that. Thank you very much. Very grateful. We want to appreciate the OVs. We want to appreciate the Emir of Lafia. Thank you. I was opportune to have my first degree in ABU. And I was freshened up academically at the University of Ibadan. Thank you very much. You are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> we, we have come, now come to the main domain. The main domain. That is the confirmment of degrees and prizes. I want at this juncture to invite our amiable, radiant vice chancellor, who is nationally, internationally recognized, who just got his award from AU, African Union, a, a first class material of physics at the University of Ibadan. Anywhere she went, she's always the first. The first, we just had a quality assurance a workshop. She was the first. She's always the first. And that is why she's my vice chancellor. And that is why we two of us, the vice chancellor and the registrar, they are short. And we are the best. We are the best. The Chancellor Ma, please permit me to stand on already established protocol. To God be all the glory. Warm welcome. With gratitude to God, I welcome with delight everyone to the second and third convocation ceremony, as well as the fifth annual Olorogun Michael Hebrew Memorial Lecture of the Michael and Cecilia Hebrew University, MCIU, Agbaroto. I express my special welcome to His Excellency, the Executive Governor of the state, who will shortly be represented, Senator Dr. Ifein Okunwa. I welcome with high regard the co-founder, visitor, and president of MCIU, our own Dr. Cecilia Ibu, OFR. I welcome the chairman and members of the board of trustees of this great university, the pro-chancellor, Professor Peter Bewa Ubo, 
and all other members of council. I welcome all our spiritual and royal fathers. I welcome parents and guardians of our students, dignitaries, and other invitees. I welcome all the OVAs and the Emmy of, La of Lafia for gracing this occasion. Gratitude. We thank the almighty God for his mercies over the last six years when Michael and Cecilia Hebrew University came to existence. The university was given temporary license to operate as the 56th private university by the federal government of Nigeria on 5th March, 2015. She opened her doors to the first set of students in October, 2015 and graduated her pioneering students on 5th September, 2019. To God be the glory. We are grateful to the Michael and Cecilia Foundation for funding and for providing the support structure. We must thank our co-founder, Dr. Cecilia Ibru, for her vision and contributions to the growth of the university. Coronavirus pandemic. The university in compliance with the directives from the federal government of Nigeria through the National Universities Commission closed down all in-person, face-to-face academic activities on 23rd March, 2020, and adopted a virtual lecture delivery through the use of the Zoom app platform. With this innovation, MCIU was able to successfully complete 2019-2020 and 2020-2021 academic sessions. We are one of the few universities with stable academic calendar. Though the university could not conduct the second graduation ceremony because of the lockdown due to the pandemic, we are delighted to organize a joint ceremony this year. We are grateful to God that as we continue to abide by the non-pharmaceutical COVID-19 protocols, our campus remains COVID-19 virus free. Accreditation. In addition to our existing programs with full accreditation status, granted by the National Universities Commission, NUC. Two more programs have been granted accreditation by the NUC in 2019. And our results are in the table. BS Industrial Chemistry scored, uh, uh, had a score of 90% and BSc Biotechnology had a score of 80%. Memorial lectures in honor of the founder, Olorogun Michael Christopher Ibro. The university continues to organize memorial lectures in honor of the founder of the institution, Olorogun Michael Christopher Ibro, who was an ex entrepreneur par excellence, a pillar of strength, a visionary guiding hand, a molder of character, an educator, a lover of children, especially the family, a humanitarian par excellence, a philanthropist without recompense, a grassroots organizer and community leader, and a true patriot without equal. The university has always sought for brilliant and distinguished speakers to deliver the lectures. The first lecture was delivered by Honorable Fritz Bafo from Ghana, and the second lecture was presented by Professor Beverly Hartline, the Vice Chancellor and Dean of Postgraduate Studies, Montana Technological University, Booth, Montana State, USA. The third memorial lecture was delivered by Dr. Joseph Shivel, the President, Galilee Management 
Institute, Nahalal, Israel. The fourth memorial lecture took a hybrid form. It was both virtual and face-to-face. -face. It was delivered by Mr. Peter Bancole, the pioneer director, entrepreneurship and development center of the Pan-Atlantic University, Lagos. MCIU Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation was launched after the lecture. The fifth memorial lecture has been presented already today by no other person but Olorogun Charles Majora. And of course, the title of the lecture we all listen to is Nigeria of the Future. Thank you very much, sir, for that brilliant piece. Partnership and international collaboration, donation of a purple air sensor. As a result of the partnership MCIU developed with some established universities and organizations, the donation of a purple air sensor was received from the Penn State University, Pennsylvania, USA on 12th November, 2020 through the Center for Atmospheric The device measures particulate matter at various levels, as well as few meteorological parameters and display same online at www.purpleair.com. The air quality index and atmospheric parameters are measured on real-time basis at one second interval and transmitted to dedicated server for global usage. This sensor is available in very few locations spread around the world, including Michael and Cecilia Ibro University. Thus, our university has joined a global network for real-time observation and measurement of particulate matter, particularly PM1, PM2.5, and PM10. Particulate matter pollution is an environmental health problem that causes a lot of respiratory diseases. MCIU is recognized as a global center for international collaborative research in the area of air pollution, which is one of the major environmental challenges of the Niger Delta, where the university is located. Donations. The university received 1,323 books donated by Books for Africa. The books are in various fields of medicine, nursing, and computer science. These donations have beefed up our current holdings in our library. MOUs with private laboratories and bioresource development center. The university has signed a memorandum of understanding with some laboratories in Wari, Benin, as well as the bioresource development center, Biodec OD, Bielsa State. Biodec is one of the centers of the National Biotechnology Development Agency, NAPTA, Abuja, an arm of the Federal Ministry of Science and Technology. Through this agreement, some of our lecturers and technologists from the Department of Biological and Chemical Sciences have been trained on the use of some state-of-the-art equipment domiciled at Biodec. MCIU hosts HEPNET Regional Conference. The university, in collaboration with the Higher Education Research and Policy Network, HEPNET, organized and hosted the 14th Regional Conference from 26th to 29th July, 2021. The theme of the conference was higher education in the new 
normal. MCIU hosts Urobo Innovation Hub. MCIU hosts the Urobo Innovation Hub. This is a place where young minds are developed. The hub has facility for nurturing of new ideas. The hub promises to be a safe place where people's curiosity is aroused. Experimenting is encouraged and mistakes are tolerated while fostering the emergence of new ideas. MCIU, Cisco and Huawei Academies. Cisco and Huawei IT firms have established their academies in MCIU. The academy is a global education program that teaches students how to design, build, troubleshoot, and secure computer networks for increased access to career and economic opportunities. Awards. MCIU received Award of Excellence. The Chancellor mentioned this in her address, but I will say it here again. The National Education Summit and Awards, a private initiative recently gave an award of excellence to the university in recognition of MCIU's exemplary and noteworthy contribution to excellence and best practices in higher education delivery on 8 August 2021. MCIU Vice Chancellor wins the African Union Kwame Nkrumah Award for Scientific Excellence 2020 edition. Recently, the Vice Chancellor of this great and promising university, Professor Ibinka Fuakbe, a professor of physics, received the African Union Kwame Nkrumah's Award for Scientific Excellence 2020 edition. The VC won the award for outstanding contributions to cutting edge research in the areas of climate change, air quality, and biophysics. The, thank you. The award further projected international standard and quality of MCIU. Endowment. The university has strived to position itself in attaining academic excellence and confront one of the challenging problems facing many private universities. Launched an endowment fund on 8 May 2018. The 10 billion Naira endowment is for infrastructure and 100 million Naira for professional seats in 10 programs of the university. You are cordially invited to contribute generously and be part of this laudable initiative. Strategic projections. We thank God for the journey so far. We will. programs, accreditation of more programs, more academic programs, enhancement of entrepreneurship training and skill acquisition, capacity development programs for staff for improved efficiency and service delivery, signing of more MOUs with prestigious universities and organizations, leveraging on existing MOUs to bring more development in teaching and research. Release of the pace setters and icons of excellence. The graduates will be graduating for the 2019-20 session. We call them the pace setters. And those that will be graduating during the 2020-2021 session, we tag them icons of excellence.
students graduated with a third class degree. I must say at this ceremony that MCIU gives automatic employment to all the first class and second class upper degree graduates. So for some of you who are serving outside of Delta States, we'll be willing to write for your deployment to enable you to serve with the university. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, Council, Senate, and the entire university community, I heartily congratulate you, our dear graduates, and pray that this achievement will be a stepping stone for greater attainment for you in the years to come. I appreciate the energy enthusiasm, time, and financial resources you devoted to your studies in order to attain this laudable status. I commend you for your relentless efforts and the contributions you make to MCIU. I charge you to remain focused. You have heard a lot this morning. Put into practice those things you have learned and heard from the university. The almighty God will make you great ambassadors of MCIU. Where there is darkness, you will give light. You will indeed be the light. Where there is despair, you will give hope. Where there is sadness, you will bring joy. And where there's corruption, and you know we have a lot of that in Nigeria, where there's corruption, I say you will be the change. I do specially congratulate the proud parents, family members, and friends of our graduates for your love, support, encouragement, and financial commitment that has made this event a reality. It is my prayer that God will grant you more joyous occasions in Jesus' name. Amen. Honorary degree awardees. I am pleased to inform you that two distinguished and accomplished Nigerians, and coincidentally, you have listened to them today, they have been singled out for recognition and honor today. MCIU only gives out a honorary degree to distinguished and accomplished Nigerians. Our recipients, Chief Peter Igo and Olorogun Charles Majoro, will shortly be conferred with the university's honorary doctorate degree. Honoris Causa. On behalf of the Governing Council, Senate, staff, and students of MCIU, I congratulate you both on your accomplishment. Conclusion and appreciation. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude this address, I would like to express my deep and sincere gratitude to our highly competent and committed staff of MCIU. The principal officers, the deans of faculties and directors, heads of department, 
members of Senate and congregation, and all non-academic staff who have labored in season and out of season together with me to fulfill the vision and mission of making MCIU a world-class university. This junction, I deem it most appropriate to express my heartfelt appreciation to the co-founder and the visioner of the university, our own Dr. Mrs. Cecilia Ibo, for her consummate passion, zeal, and resolute commitment in ensuring that MCIU is a success story in spite of all militating and daunting challenges. Madam President, it is my prayer that the almighty God will grant you joy, peace, good health, and long life. He will renew your strength like that of the eagle and grant you divine power to finish your race to the end. I thank all invited guests, all invited vice chancellors, rectors, provosts, registrars, distinguished guests, parents, and guardians of our graduates for honoring our invitation. It is my prayer that the almighty God will grant you safe trip to your respective destinations. Thank you, and may God bless you all. I, I'm not hearing your claps. What is wrong with you? Hey, that's my vice chancellor. Did you hear that? Hey, wonderful woman. Thank you very much, our vice chancellor. Professor Ibinika Fungakpe, let me cap it all. Let me cap it all. In the only, the only family since I've been going to school in 1950s, I've never seen a family whose husband is a vice chancellor and the wife is a vice chancellor. Amen. So the husband is a vice chancellor of the Federal University of Technology, Akure, and the wife is the vice chancellor of Michael and Cecilia Hebrew University. Let's clap. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. My chancellor, the pro-chancellor, the vice chancellor, the council members, the honoraries, my beloved deans, the principal officers, vice chancellors, registrars, provosts, ladies and gentlemen, and my OVs, and the Emir of Latvia. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you. I want to use this opportunity to invite my chancellor, the chancellor and the vice chancellor to come and stand here. My chancellor and vice chancellor. The chancellor and my vice chancellor. The faculty of management and social science students Please, can you stand up? All for 2019, 2020, for 2020 and 2021, all stand up. The chancellor, ma, the vice chancellor, The chancellor, ma, the vice chancellor, 
the persons who have been presented have fulfilled the requirements of the laws and regulations of the university and have been found worthy, both in character and in learning, to be admitted to the first degrees of the respective faculties. The chancellor, the vice chancellor, I know I now call upon the dean of the Faculty of Management and Social Sciences, Dr. Isaac Onoyere. Let's clap for him. Dr. Isaac Onoyere, to present the candidates who have certified the requirements of the laws and regulations of Michael and Cecilia Ibru University, Agbarauto, and who have been found worthy, both in character and in learning, to be admitted to the first degrees of the university. My dean. The student, the graduate student of the Faculty of Management Science used to remain standing. Ma, the Chancellor. In the name of the Faculty of Management and Social Sciences, authority confined on me, I have the honor and respect to have the persons who have satisfied the degree program in the university, those present and those who for good cause and unavoidably absent, and for whom I stand proudly, who have found greedy, or have completed, or have been in good character and learning for the confinement of the degree of science on banking and finance, accountancy, business admin, and economics. Thank you. The student, have been first have been recognized for special award and for first class degree presentation. I, the Chancellor of Michael and Cecilia Hebrew University, hereby confer on you all the degree Bachelor of Science in accounting, banking, and finance, business administration, and economics of the Michael and Cecilia Ibo University, Agbaroto. Clap for yourselves. Thank you, the chancellor, the first class students of Faculty of Management and Social Sciences come forward and shake our chancellor and the vice chancellor. Can you go forward? We'll do that later, later, it's later, 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 later.
Let's clap for them. Thank you very much. Those are the first class graduates. Thank you very much. The chancellor, the vice chancellor, the persons who have been presented have fulfilled the requirements and laws and regulations of the university have been found worthy, both in character and learning, to be admitted to the first degrees of the respective faculties. And I invite the Dean, Faculty of Natural and Applied Sciences, Dr. Associate Prof. Dr. Alade Shelu Victor. Faculty of Science, Natural and Applied Science, please stand up. 2019, 2020, and 2020, 2021. Thank you. My Chancellor, I now call upon the Dean of the Faculty of Natural and Applied Sciences, Associate Prof. Victor Alade Shelu to present the candidates who have satisfied the requirements of the laws and regulations of Michael and Cecilia Ibro University, Agbara Oto, and who have been found worthy, both in character and in learning, to be admitted to the first degrees of the university. Uh, the Chancellor. In the name of the Faculty of Natural and Applied Sciences and the authority of the Senate, I have the honor to present to you these persons and those who, who have successfully completed their degree programs in this university, those present and those who for good and unavoidably absent, and for whom I stand proxy, who have been found worthy in character and in learning for the confirmment of the degree of Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry, Biotechnology, Computer Science, and Industrial Chemistry and to recognize in particular the following first class graduates. If you are first class graduate in 2019, 20, 2020, 20, 2021, can you please come forward to have a handshake? And that, that just three. It's Apple favor here because I know that. Ilugo, congratulations. The rest student or graduates, can you please come forward there? Let's see you, apart from those having first class. Congrats, congrats, congrats. You see, that's what we're trying. All the other students, natural and applied sciences, whether you are computer science, biotech, the chancellor would like to see you out here. Be fast.
Faculty of Management, come and have a shake with the Chancellor and the Vice Chancellor quickly. Management, quickly, quickly. Quickly, quickly. Come and look anywhere. Handshake with the Chancellor and the Vice Chancellor. That's wonderful. Let's clap for them. Let's clap for our new graduates. Clap for them. Ah, thank you. I, I remember our president, small boy, after finishing his uh, 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 they call Majesty after finishing his uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, uh, kindergarten school, and he was asked, "How did it go?" You know what he said? That it's not easy to do what to go through kindergarten school. Can you believe that it's not easy? Thank you. Now let's go to the award of prizes. Award of prizes. The Chancellor, ma, the Chancellor, I have the honor to invite you to present prizes to the following graduates who have attained academic distinctions in their respective fields of study during their four year academic sessions. Number one. I want to inform you that the best overall best student, graduation student in the university, both in 2019, 2020, 2020, 2021, academic session is no other person than blessing, Blessing Temple Egbe. Blessing Temple Egbe. Please come out. Clap for her. The overall best student. Let's clap for her. Mm -hmm. I, I did. I did. I called. No, I did. I did. No. Okay, is it? Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. That is that is the overall best student for 2019-2020 with a CGPA of 4.87. 4.87. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's blessing temple a berry. Thank you very much. The best graduating student in the Faculty of Natural and Applied Sciences for 2019-2020 academic session is no other person. Again, blessing temple a berry. Blessing temple a berry. With a CGPA of 4.87. Unbeatable. Unbeatable. Thank you. Unbeatable. Thank you. The best overall student in the Department of Biological and Chemical Sciences 2019-2020 academic session. No other person again. Blessing Temple Egberi. CGPA of 4.87. Clap for her. Okay. Okay. The overall best graduating student in the Faculty of Management and Social Sciences for 2019-2020 is no other person than Egbe Onyi Bunoa Okoro Onyi Egbe Okoro Thank you. See her coming. Thank you very much. With a CPG, CGPA of 4.75. Let's clap for her for that. Thank you. To continue again, the best graduating student in the Department of Business Administration for 2019-2020 academic session is still the same person. Egbe Onyibu Noha Okoro, congratulations. Okay. You have thank you very much. Yes, thank you. The best graduating student in the Department of Mathematics and Computer Science 2019-2020 academic session. Aku favor Ebike Daumene. Aku favor Ebike Daumene with a CGPA of 4.74. Let's clap for her. It's not case. It's not case. Okay. The best graduating student in the Department of Economics 2019-2020 academic session is happiness. Onaro Gane Godwin. Godwin. Happiness. Onaro Gane. Let's clap for her.
I think they are. Thank you very much. Blessing. The best graduating students, they are tied. There are two people here in the Department of Accounting and Banking and Finance 2019 2020 academic session. They are two. Kithiana Ogara, Ejaro Medo Gene, where is she? Kithiana, please clap for her. With a CGPA of 4.72. And the second person is success. Ego of Ro Aye. Success of Ro Aye. <laughs> Welcome, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Come in, Benny. Success. Success. Thank you. Let's clap for her. Success, ego. That's another. Maybe you are the daughter of Baba Peter Ego. I don't know. Ego of Roye. Thank you very much. Now we are going to we are going to 2021 academic session now and the overall best students graduating students in the university in 2020 2021 academic session obey harriet ogenekome obey harriet ogenekome with cgpa of 4.75. Let's clap for her. She has been our student representative, a leader of all the students. We call her Kome. Thank you very much. Well done, Kome. We appreciate you. The, the, the overall best graduating student in the Faculty of Management and Social Sciences for 2021-2021 academic session is still Ogbe, Harriet Ogenekome. Again, I don't know, women have taken over everything. I don't know. The best graduating students in the Department of Economics 2020-2021 academic session is again Ogbe, Harriet Ogene coming. Uh -uh. It's all women, women, women. Mays, where are you? <laughs> the best, the overall best graduating student in the Faculty of Natural and Applied Sciences 2020-2021 Academy Session. Tessi Arroyo, Tessi Arroyo with CGPA of 4.51. Let's clap for her. Thank you. You are welcome. That's Tessi. Thank you very much, Tessie. Mm. Okay, the best graduating student in the department, in the department of biological and chemical sciences, 2020, 2021 academic session is still Tessie. How are you? Uh -uh. Uh. The best graduating student in the Department of Accounting and Banking and Finance 2020 2021 academic session is a go to Organe Tanure J. Mari. 
Jane Mary. Yes. Yes. She answered, she's a daughter to a professor in Delso. Thank you. Well done. That's Jane Mary at Potu. The next one. Yes. The, no, no. Yes. The next best graduating student in the Department of Business Administration for 2020 and 2021 academic session is Solomon at Pongemen. Huh? What? <laughs> Solomon as for Gene. So it's another female. Hey. <laughs> Everything is by the females. Congratulations. Well done, Apo Gene. Thank you very much. What do we have to? The best graduating student in the Department of Mathematics and Computer Science Department is Ofio Fio Emmanuel a destiny, a destiny. So, Emmanuel, a destiny. The only boy. University to a Canem Glory Sunday. Best student is going to get something 15,000 from a cash award from the HOD. Where's Glory Ekanem? Please come and have a handshake. The dollars award. The dollars award. Where's glory? Glory. Please, hurry. Okay. Thank you very much. Okoro Ebe. Onye.
can go back to your seat now. Thank you. Ah, sorry. <laughs> you are sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Yes. We are now to the next level. Confirmment of honorary degrees. The chancellor. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, I'll give it to you. The chancellor, the council, and the Senate, Michael and Cecilia Hebrew University at Barato, has resolved that the honorary doctorate degree be offered, be conferred on Olorogun Peter Ugo. Doctor Ugo, thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, our registrar. Ladies and gentlemen, all protocols respectfully observed. I think we have come to the high point of today's ceremony. Once again, a big congratulations to all the graduates and uh, particular congratulations to the only male graduate who salvaged the male species. When I heard Solomon Akpogen, we are all jubilating that uh, finally a male graduate was coming forward and uh, lo and behold, we saw another female. Uh, thank you to my friend who salvaged the situation and uh, I am promising to support you with uh, a small token of 50,000 naira. That's to challenge all the other young male graduates. Please see me after the ceremony for your small reward. Okay, I have been asked to observe a very important point of today's ceremony, which is a validatory speech. So uh, we'll take that and then we'll go right into it. Very sorry about that. The validatory speech will be delivered by the overall best student. And that is, that is who, please. Thank you. Please come forward and make your, let's clap for her. The best overall student. Validatory speech, quickly. Thank you very much, sir. The Vice Chancellor Ma, please permit me to stand on the existing protocols. Greatest Nigeria students! Greatest Nigeria students! Greatest Nigeria students! Greatest Asetai Koe! Greatest Asetai Koe, you are supposed to reply me with what? Bauke, Mr. You know yet today. <laughs> Greatest metabolites at Setai Koe. Greatest metabolites. Thank you very much. Present before you today is blessing a very temple of the graduating classes, class of 2019-2020 academic session from the Department of Biochemistry in this great institution. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's quite a pleasure that you have graced this occasion with your presence today. I am most grateful. First, let me thank the almighty God, the governor and controller of the universe for making this epoch marking day possible for me to stand here before these distinguished guests today to present the valedictory speech at this convocation ceremony. Representing the gradu graduating classes of 2019-2020 and 2020-2021 academic sessions of Michael and Cecilia Hebrew University, MCI. This is an unforget unforgettable experience of my life. Standing on behalf of my fellow graduating students today, I would love to congratulate the co-graduates for being alumni of this great institution of learning. Please, let's put our hands together for each other. Ah. 
I am humbled to stand before you today to reflect on our collective journeys in this institution. The past years has certainly been tough, but we are all here today celebrating our victory, our achievements, and the journey on which we have all embarked towards our future destination. This journey has not been easy, ranging from stressful lectures, late night preparation for tests and examinations, and so on. But by the grace of God today, we are here. This monumental achievement was made possible by God through some great individuals in my life. My unalloyed and deepest gratitude goes to them. These are the Chancellor, Dr. Mrs. Cecilia Ibru, Cecilia Ibru the Vice Chancellor, Prof, Professor Mrs. Ibi Inka Fuape, my supervisor, Dr. Francis Irabo, for his immense guidance and support in my academic journey. I also want to express my gratitude to my entire department lecturers and every other lecturers of other departments and non-academic staffs. You all did a good job with us. To the registrar, Dr. T.N. Kolo, I want to say a very big thank you to you for your constant discipline and morals which you instilled in us all. Thank you very much, sir. My fellow graduating students here today, this institute has given us the fundamental knowledge, skills, morals, and has broadened our IQ in diverse fields. As we celebrate our graduation today, we should uphold our quest for excellence in the changing world, because we are in a changing world. We should always uphold our quest to always be excellent in this changing world. We should be able to always be open to positive changes and put in our best to achieve greater heights. As we become graduates of this institution, we must uphold excellence in all that we do to make our institution and our parents proud. The university is a place that comes with learning and well, as well as lots of distractions. But we are here today as victors. We should continue in this path of being tenacious on our goals because this is a starting phase in our lives. There is one thing to have goals and another to be focused on those goals. Our ability to remain focused on the goals should be our watchword every day. This popular saying, the way you make your bed, so you lie on it and make A while the sun shine are two important statements I always keep to heart and they have always guide my path. Always doing the right thing at the right time usually pays off. This yields positive results at all times. As we become graduates of this institution today, let's carry the name of our university forward positively by being good ambassadors of this great university everywhere we go. We should be candidates of excellence, good morals, discipline, diligence, hard work, and always producing good results. To the present undergraduates here today, I would like you to take to heart that to ascertain greater heights in academic pursuits, one has to discover oneself. Discovering oneself in this case is identifying what suits you perfectly when it comes to studying. Once this is achieved, a huge success be attained. Determination is also a key to success because when your mind is set on a particular goal, usually you achieve that goal. I would like at this point to express my profound gratitude to the federal government of Nigeria through the amnesty program for offering me full scholarship for my studies here. A big thank you goes to my family, my mother, Mrs. Rebecca Egeri, my siblings, my relatives. I want to say thank you for your spiritual and physical support. 
Also, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to my uncle, Mr. Zora Monde, for his immense support to me, for believing in me, and giving me this opportunity to be here today. Thank you very much, sir. Usually, on graduating days, we look forward to seeing heroes from outside, but we forget that we are the heroes within us. All through my years in this school, I've discovered that we do not need to search everywhere for inspiration, because we have the potentials to inspire each and every one of us here. As you live here today, be proud, celebrate what you have achieved, acquired, and look forward with open-mindedness to how you can become an inspiration to others. Congratulations, class of 2020 and 2021. We made it, glory be to God. Thank you everyone. That's the overall best student in Michael and Sicilian Hebrew University. Blessing a very. I want all graduating students to stand up quickly and let us do the oath of induction into Michael and Sicilia Hebrew University Alumni Association. Please have your copy. Say it after me and insert where necessary. I, having completed in the department, faculty of Michael and Cecilia Hebrew University, desire to be admitted into Michael and Cecilia Hebrew Almina Association. I reaffirmed the authenticity of my admissions, credential into MCIU, undergraduate studies, and all that I have honestly earned. All the credits reflected on my academic records. I admit fully Responsibility attending the statue of MCIU Excellence. Alminos and the bona fide custody of the certificate to be issued, which remains the property of the university. And it could be withdrawn for causes related to dishonesty in matters pertaining to my admission, graduation, and open negotiation of university philosophy or damage to her image. I do solemnly affirm that I will fully subscribe to the aims and objectives of the association and at all times contribute to the growth and development of Michael and Cecilia Hebrew University in particular and the society in general. So help me God. So what you do, you sign it, sign it, and submit to the student's affairs officer, your email, your GSM, WhatsApp number, and postal address. God bless all of you in Jesus' name. Please submit to student's affairs officer. Thank you. Now I welcome Dr. Benson Ewell. Thank you, my registrar. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the high point of this uh, ceremony. Um, once again, we 
congratulate the graduates. Today is a very special day in the life and times of this great citadel of learning, the Michael and Cecilia Ibri University. We have observed all necessary protocols and also in memory of the legacy of the icon and the colossus of uh, this foundation that has established this gathering today. We've honored the life and times of our father, the late Michael Christopher Hebrew, and what he stood for. Part of what he represents is one thing that we'll be uh, doing right about now, which is celebrating and honoring the life, the times and contributions to the growth of our nation. One man whose voice resonates the beauty of the television, media, entertainment, and technology sector, and across sectors of our great nation. The name Olorogo Peter Igu, member of the Federal Republic, MFR, is a name that is synonymous with success, hard work, diligence, commitment. With all respect and pleasure, I have the singular honor to invite a man who is a father figure to me, Olorogo Peter Igu, MFR. Let's put our hands together for him. As we do the full citation for the confirmment of the honorary doctorate degree. Olorogo Peter Igu, MFR, is the Okobaru of the Uwe Kingdom, and that title was given to him by the traditional ruler, his traditional father, his royal majesty, the OVA of Uwe Kingdom, Dr. Emmanuel Sideso Abe One, Ajue, Ajue, Wosuto, Omogu, Omogu, Wosuto. Olorogo Peter Igo is an ace broadcaster. He is the first Urobo man from this part of Nigeria, South South, to have risen to become the Director General of the Nigerian Lottery Regulatory Commission. Let's put our hands together for him. And we also remember his work as a one-time executive director of the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. A short biography of this great icon standing before you, ladies and gentlemen, is his sojourn into the television industry. At the vanguard of film production and television industry in Nigeria, the name Peter Ego became a household name that evokes pleasant and beautiful memories. Memories that continue to remind us of his great work and the reflections of his contribution to what is now known as the entertainment industry, giving birth to the likes of the Nollywood industry, the social media, comedy platforms, and all sorts of the value chain of the entertainment industry. They owe a debt of gratitude to this great man standing in front of you. Let's put our hands together for him. And he's done this for over three decades. And we thank God for his health and for his life. And we'll rather celebrate him when he's alive. He's known for his milestone achievements as a pace setter whose work has been instrumental to the evolution of the television and film production industry in Nigeria. Born in the Asian city of Jaws, 1948, 28th of March, he hails from Ethiopia East local government area of Delta State. His early education started at the St. Therese's Primary School between 1955 to 1961 in Jaws. From there, he proceeded to St. John's College, Kaduna, where he obtained a higher school certificate and divisional West Africa school certificate in 1966 and 1968, respectively. 
1972, ladies and gentlemen, our great icon standing in front of you and the Bachelor of Arts degree in English language with second class honors from the great University of Ibadan. Let's put our hands together for him. It's interesting to note that prior to his career that became a successful career at the Nigerian Television Authority, where he rose to become executive director, Mr. Peter Eagle worked as a teacher, starting at his alma mater, St. John's College, Kaduna, where he taught English language and literature from January to September of 1969. During his presentation, he told you about that story and how he navigated from teaching into the world of television. He was federal education officer between 1972 to 74, after which he moved to Bida Teachers College where he taught English language and literature while also serving as the head of the English language and literature department, a master in charge of dramatic society and federal education officer one at the then Northwestern University, Northwestern State. His broadcasting career started in 1975 as one of the pioneer staff of the then Nigerian television, which is now known as the Nigerian Television Authority. He started in Sokoto, where he rose through the ranks to the position of producer one, and then to become the head of the drama department. He later served as head of programs department and senior producer respectively. From 1979 to 1983, he grew into various roles at the NTA Sokoto. He was then principal producer from 1979 to 1980. Between 1980 to 1981, he became a controller and then manager production services from 1981 to 1983. He thereafter served as acting general manager national programs and assistant director programs. Ladies and gentlemen, having proved his mettle in various roles, Peter Eagle, who is known for his class and quality, was then appointed as a general manager, NTA Enugu in 1987, 12 years after he joined the service. He held that position till 1996, and was then transferred to the NTA headquarters in Lagos, where he served as a deputy director of programs from 1997 to 1999. The next eight years of his life, about that time, he became the executive director of programs at the NTA headquarters Abuja. Let's put our hands together for him. He's had an illustrious career flourishing across various states where he was posted. And between 2007 and 2008, he served as executive director of marketing. He also served as a chairman NTA TV Enterprises and chairman broadcasting organization of Nigeria Committee on Sports and Marketing. Let's further evaluate some of his contributions to society, to nationhood, and to human capital development. The celebrants who we are conferring a doctorate degree retired from the NTA after meritorious service of over 30 years of his life, dedicating it to nation building and contributing to development of culture. He retired and was invited to serve because of his illustrious contribution. He was invited again to serve as the director general of the National Lottery Regulatory Commission. From 2009 to 2013, he deployed his wealth of experience, expertise, and dedication to restructure the commission. I am a testimony to that restructuring, and I want us to appreciate our big brother, our father, our uncle, Mr. Peter Eagle, for the work he did at the Lottery Regulatory Commission. He brought public awareness and unleashed the potentials of that commission and that commission became a significant contributor towards the GDP and the economy of our country. Currently, Mr. Peter Eagle serves as the executive chairman 
at Peter Eagle Consults, PI Consults, a company he founded in 2013 to share his knowledge, experience, expertise with others through consulting and training services in various aspects of content development and production. His contributions also include many conferences, seminars, and workshops in which he facilitated and also organized in the course of his career. Some of these include the television production seminar, Send Friends Berlin, Germany, December 1977, International Public Television Impute Screening Conference in South Carolina, United States of America in 1984, the annual conference of the British Film Institute, 1986, training course at the Nigerian Institute of Management for Finance for Non-Functional Executives, Script Writers and Producers Conference in Ogiri, Ogun State, under the auspices of John Hopkins, United States of America in April 1990, Top Management Orientation Workshop for Commercialization of the NTA, that was in 1990, the Script Writers Conference for Movies in Agungu, Kevin State, 2004. In addition to all of these wonderful contributions, he was awarded and recognized by a number of corporate organizations, including the federal government. Being a pioneer staff of the Nigerian Television Authority, Peter Higo was the creative force behind many soap operas and TV programs. And one of the stories you heard from him today was the cock crow. Our royal father, the Emir of Lafia, mentioned that he spent a part of his life in the city of Jos, and that one of the landmarks and memories of the man we celebrate today was that production called Crow, and how the city and the state literally shut down, and that was across the nation, not just in Jos. Can we celebrate this man with a round of applause? That soap opera was a blockbuster and was nationally accepted and received cross-culture in our great nation. And it received a number of commendations, including from the Union of National Radio and Television Organizations of Africa, because it went across Nigeria, URTNA. It was also selected for screening at the International Public Television, Imputes, the screening conference under the Rockefeller Grant in United States of America in 1984. He's had various honors and awards, amongst which include Best Producer and Best Director at the NTA Siva Jubilee Awards of 1984, Merit Award by the National Association of Nigeria Theater Arts Practitioners, NANTA, April 2004. He is the Khan Kabi by the Emir of Agungu, which was a traditional title conferred on him in 2005. He has a Lifetime Achievement Award to his credits in recognition of his outstanding contribution to the film industry in Africa by the Board of African Film Academy in April of 2006. Ladies and gentlemen, Olorogu Peter Igo also holds the honor of the National Awards as a member of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, MFR, of December 2006. And only last year, we all woke up to the great news of the celebration of his life and times and achievements and contribution to the movie industry and the entertainment industry at large. He received the Industry Merit Award by the Africa Magic Viewers' Choice Awards, AMVCA, at the 11th edition of the award, which was held in March 2020. He also shares that award with his lovely son, Tosin Ego, who has also grown to become a veteran producer and is making beautiful movies in Hollywood and following after the footsteps of his father, Indeed, they say the glory of the latter shall be greater than the former. The son 
is riding in the stead of his father and is doing great things. You heard his story, how he couldn't have achieved all of this without the support of a beautiful woman who supports him and stands by him and has been there all through thick and thin. He is happily married to his lovely wife and they are blessed with beautiful children. Our, our D is a polyglot who is renowned for speaking over eight Nigerian languages fluently. And in the course of his presentation today, you heard a bit of his flair in languages. He is detribalized, born of robust stock, but bred nationally. He has no color. He has no skin. It is the content of your character and the quality of the value that you cherish are the things that bond you to him. And that is why you are seeing friends all over the country here in honor and celebration of the life of this legend. Today, ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular honor and privilege to present to you the Chancellor of the Michael and Cecilia Ibrahim University, members of the Governing Council, the Vice Chancellor, the Senate, and um, the distinguished royal fathers here present, distinguished guests from all over the country, all over the world, members of the press, Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our celebrant, and I'll hand over right now to let me quickly also invite um, the lovely wife of uh, the celebrant, Mrs. Eagle, to please come to the platform to join the husband here. Please, can you come up here? Let's put our hands together for her, please. Can you celebrate behind every successful man? There is a woman behind it. Let's recognize Mrs. Ego as she comes to the platform to support um, the wife, the husband. Celebrate the life of a living legend, veteran ace broadcaster, Olorogo Peter Eagle, former executive director at the NTA and former director general of the Nigerian Lottery Regulatory Commission. A big, big congratulations. And this is who the cap fits, let him wear it. You agree with me, the cap fits him, doesn't it? Does the cap fit him? Can I hear your yes? Let's put our hands together for him one more time. Congratulations. Congratulations. So the chancellor would um, pronounce the confirmation and announce the title as being confirmed. And henceforth, he shall thereafter be addressed accordingly. My chancellor, with all due respect, on the past conferred on me as a chancellor in the name of the Senate Council and in accordance to the provisions of the university status, I confer on you, sir, the honorary degree of Doctor of Letters, honorary Corsa, of the Michael and Cecilia Ibrahim University, Agbara Oto, with the rights and privileges attached thereto. Congratulations. Congratulations. Doctor of Letters, Honorary Corso, conferred on Olorogo Doctor Peter Ego. He shall henceforth be addressed accordingly. 
Olorogo, Dr. Peter Ego, big, big congratulations. Let's put our hands together for him. So, um, we'll um, invite uh, the royal fathers for pictures uh, with, the, with the newly conferred doctorates. It's Royal Majesties of your Fubia Kingdom and the Emir of Lafia. Thank you very much, sir. It's okay, it's okay. And, uh, Peter, stand, stand close to the... To... Congratulations, thank you very much. Dr. Peter Ego, uh, maybe we'll give you one minute to say. Ladies and gentlemen, we go right into the next uh, presentation of ordinary doctorate and this is um, to one of the convocation guest speakers today ladies and gentlemen Congratulations, Dr. Peter Ego. Thank you, Royal Fathers. Thank you so much. Let's uh, quickly take the citation and professional profile. Citation and professional profile of one of our brightest and best minds in Robo Nation and a great leader who has served in various capacities. I present architect Olorogo Oganovo Charles Majoro. Let's put our hands together for him as he comes to the platform. Please, let's put our hands together for him as he comes to the platform for his citation. Please, um, may I implore there be some decorum um, as we honor architect Charles Majoro. Some decorum, please. Architect Olorogo Oganavo Charles Majoro is a principal partner and founder ADEC Nigerian Architects and the Majoro Partnership. Architects, planners and engineers. There are so many things to describe architects Olorogo Charles Majoro, who we 
fondly call OCM because the man in front of you, ladies and gentlemen, is a consummate professional. He is an urban and regional planner of great repute and an architect par excellence who has contributed, continues to contribute immensely towards the development and practice of architecture in Nigeria. From the Urubu settlement of Ekregeta Abraka in Ethiopia East local government area of Delta State, where he was born on the 8th of February, 1946. Olorogo Majoro's impact has been felt across the nation through his contributions to landmark projects in various states, including Delta, Edo, Lagos, Oyo, Kaduna, and Enugu, amongst others. He also has attracted international fame and claim by deploying his expertise in various capacities across other nations of the world, including Egypt, Sri Lanka, Kenya, and Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, let us do a deep dive into his academic and professional background. May I crave your indulgence for some decorum, please? Let's give honor to whom honor is due. Can we reduce the distraction in the hall, please? Thank you. Thank you. Olorogu Majuro completed his primary education at the CMS school in Ekregeta of Abraka, Delta State, between 1952 and 1958, before proceeding to the government college Ugeli Wari House, where he obtained his secondary school education and HSC, higher school certificate, between 1959 to 1965. In 1972, ladies and gentlemen, he earned his bachelor's degree in architecture with honors from the Amadu Bello University, Zaria, Kaduna State. He also won prizes for distinguished performance in his final year project and thesis. Let's put our hands together for him. I think the students should be interested in this profile because it's a distinction and we've celebrated distinction today already. And you have an icon in front of you who has shown you the path that you too can go all the way to be really successful in life. On the professional side, Ulurugu Majuro was elected as the first Urubu man to be president of the Nigeria Institute of Architects. He was elected as a member of the institute and registration as a chartered architect with the Architects Registration Council of Nigeria, Alcon, in 1974. That same year, he became a member of the Architectural Association of Britain, after which he was elected as a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Architects, F47, in 1991. Not one to rest on his boss, he proceeded to study for a postgraduate diploma in urban and regional planning and a master's degree in urban and regional planning at the University of Nigeria, Unsuka, Enugu State in 2001 and 2006, respectively. Thereafter, he completed the chief executive program, CEP 14, at the Lagos Business School. He is also a fellow of the Institute of Directors, FIOD. Let's put our hands together for him. Olorogu Majoro began his career as a professional architect with Niger Consultants, where he rose to become an associate partner between 1972 and 1974. He moved on to found Ardec Nigeria Architects and the Majoro Partnerships, architects, planners, and engineers, where he has served as his principal since 1974 date. With offices in Lagos and Wari and across various parts of the country, these firms have established a reputation for indigenous expertise and integrity as confirmed by their significant contributions to landmark projects of national relevance in the country. Since 1994, Olorogo Majoro has served as honorary professional advisor to the Department of Architecture at the Yaba College of Technology, 
Yabatech, Lagos, Ladoke, Akintola University of Technology of Bomosho, or your state, and Edo State University, Ekwoma, Edo State. In his capacity, he serves as an external examiner and jurist. He also assists in curriculum development and moderates internal seminars for staff and students, proficiency and contributions. In an illustrious career that has spanned over 45 years as an architect, planner and project manager, Olorogo Charles Majoro has designed and implemented many projects with clientele ranging from federal and state governments to private institutions caught across various sectors of the economy. Let's put our hands together for him. He has further brought his proficiency and experience to bear in various professional bodies where he served to advance the practice of architecture. Some of these include African Union of Architects, where he served as Secretary General from 1989 to 1995 and rose to become the first Nigerian, first Nigerian to be the president of the Africa Union of Architects between 1995 and 1999. And the only Ruboman to date, the only Ruboman to date, president of the African Union of Architects. As part of his proficiency and professionalism, he joined the Architect Registration Council of Nigeria, Alcon, as a registrar between 1983 to 1994, and the Nigerian Institute of Architects, where he served in various roles as secretary, as also secretary of the Board of Architectural Education from 75 to 1981, Honorary General Secretary from 1981 to 1987, and also became the first Urubu man and only Urubu man to date to have been president of the Nigerian Institute of Architects between 1993 to 1995. He is a sought after resource person and speakers, and um, without mincing words, you saw the way he painted the picture of the Nigerian of our future. He did a fantastic job, and the Emir of Lafia was uh, super excited, and we pray that uh, as the Lord lays it in his heart, the way we celebrated him in the MCIU, so Nigeria will confer a national award in that same regard, because he who the cap fits, let him truly wear it. The man is deserving of honor and recognition. Recently, he was a distinguished lecturer at the 60th anniversary of the Institute of the Nigerian Institute of Architects, where he delivered the lecture, The Dilemma of Relevance. I want you to please plug in and con connect to get the, the materials from that presentation. It was really world class. Beyond his professional proficiencies and contributions, Olorogo Majuro is a bright and shining example whose light and influence continue to impact generations across various constituencies, including his alma mater, the Government College Ugeli, where he served in various roles, first as secretary at the Lagos branch of the college's Old Boys Association, GCU OBA, from 1980 to 1986. And in 2019, he rose to become the president general worldwide of the Government College Old Boys Association. Let's put our hands together for him. Awards and honors. Olorogo Charles Majoro has so many awards and accolades to his belt. He continues to be recognized and celebrated for his meritorious service and contributions to the field of practice and humanity in general. Over the years, he's built a long list of awards and recognitions across various domains, professional, academic, sports, and social. A few amongst others include the following, the award of honor for outstanding contributions towards the practice of architecture all the way in Egypt by the Society of Egyptian Architects in May 2008. You know, Egypt is the center of innovation and development in the world. And for the Society of Egyptian Architects to recognize you, you must be in a class different from the rest. Let's put our hands together for him.
As a result of being a former president of the African Union of Architects, the first Nigerian, the first Roman, he received the presidential award for service to the union and also for the expansion of his activities across several countries of the African continent. And this was in October 20th of 1998. Let's put our hands together for him. He also received the recognition of service as member of council and registrar from the Architects Registration Council of Nigeria in 1981 to 1994, as well as a presidential award medal by the Royal Architectural Institute of Canada. Let's put our hands together for him. There are so many achievements to his credits. He's also received numerous academic and sports recognition, award for the best thesis project in 1972, ABU Zaria, Award for the Sportsman Award, Captain of Cricket, Badminton and Swimming, 1971, ABU Zaria. Music Society Award, Member of the University Band, ABU Zaria. Federal Government Scholarship Award, 1967 to 1972, ABU Zaria. Government College Ugeli Distinguished Sportsman Award for Cricket and Table Tennis, 1964. Western Region of Nigerian Scholarship Award, for academically gifted students, Government College Ugeli, 1953, 59 to 63. Ikoi Club, 1938 Service Award, Gov Captain, 2001. And on the social end, the Delta State Government of Nigeria, Excellence Award for Contribution to the Beauty Environment and Development Control in the State, 1997. City Council of Nairobi Award of Excellence, June 2001. The Spinal Cord Injuries Association of Nigeria Gold Service Award for providing pro bono professional services to building of a huge center for the treatment and settlement of the disabled in our society. That was in 1999. Let's put our hands together. He is a dedicated Anglican, faithful, and is committed to the Church of Nigeria, the Anglican Communion, and in that same faith was recognized for his contribution to the growth of the Anglican Communion on the 5th April 2014. He also received the Merit Award for Selfless Community Service to Humanity by the Spinal Cord Jury Injuries Association in 2004. Also, the Ilupeju Lions Club of Lagos awarded him the Distinguished Service Award on the 13th of June 1998. And of course, Secretary General, Delta State Movement, 1978 to 1990. He has also contributed to the Robo Progress Union, where he rose to become the first Vice President General and contributed immensely to the development of the Urubu Progress across the world. Let's put our hands together for him. Olorogo architect Charles Oganovo Majoro was recently rewarded recognized, celebrated by the Delta State Government for his meritorious contributions to Delta State when Delta State turned how many years? How many years? Delta State Atleti was just a recent award program. The Delta State Governor, His Excellency, Senator Ifani Okowa, recognized the legacies of the great men who have contributed to the growth and development of Delta State in the last 30 years. And he stood tall, shoulder to shoulder, far above, you know, and was highly recognized with a Lifetime Achievement Award by the Excellency, the Executive Governor of Delta State. And so what we are doing today is just adding to the feather, the feather of the recognitions and awards that our father, my father, my mentor, my leader has been recognized for. He is the Egbo of Abraka Kingdom, a chieftaincy title conferred on him by the OVF of Orarivi Abraka. He is also the Udumese Rovi of Efroto Kingdom, uh, conferred to him by His Royal Majesty, the OV of Efroto Kingdom. And you listen to him speaking with so much glow and um, and pride of the great man that he is. He's a mentor to royal fathers. And one of the royal fathers testified of his mentorship today. 
So we do appreciate the legacies of um, our father, Olorogun Charles Majero. In summary, in fact, I have had to abridge this profile because uh, there's so much to say about this living legend in front of us. Some of his landmark achievements or notable achievements that you must be familiar with, talking about his landmark architectural footprints and legacies. Olorogu Majuro has expanded the frontiers of knowledge with at least minimum of 58 publications and presentations which has been published. Let's put our hands together for him. He has also executed several high impact projects and architectural designs. Some of these include the Nigerian Embassy Building in Abidjan, the Securities and Exchange Commission, Victoria Island. These are legacy projects. Heritage Bank, Wuse Abuja, the Olam Nigerian Office Development in Igomo, Lagos. How many of you remember the Teslim Balogun Stadium in Lagos? Teslim Balogun Stadium Complex to Lagos has the work, the architectural work to the credit of the man we are celebrating today. That is a national legacy. The Sunshine Towers, Victoria Island, Landmark Towers, VI, Lagos, the Nigerian Maritime University in Delta State, Rivotel Hotel Golf Resort in Nabraka, you know, Delta State, amongst so many to list. He's a nationalist and a polyglot traveler who's, who speaks over four or five different languages, including Urobo, English language, Shakiri, Yoruba, French, and also can also communicate in Hausa, as well as a smart train of Igbo language. The man is a true nationalist. He's an avid golfer, for those of us who know him quite well. He loves swimming, study of languages, music, engaging in current affairs, and also loves amateur photography. He's married to his lovely wife, Carol Majoro, and they are blessed with wonderful children. Some of us are privileged to have grown under his leadership and mentorship. And um, once again, it's my honor and privilege to be doing your citation, my father and my leader, my mentor, and I'm very proud of your work. And this is just the beginning of greater glory. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to receive the chancellor of the Michael and Cecilia Ibrahim University as she decorates and dresses the Egbo of Abraka Kingdom, the Odumese Rovi of a Frotto Kingdom, a man who has been recognized by the Delta State Government recently for his meritorious contribution to the growth and development of Delta State. A man who has been recognized by the Society of Egyptian Architects. First Roboman and first Nigerian to be president of the African Union of Architects. First Roboman to be recognized as the president of the Nigerian Institute of Architects. Ladies and gentlemen, you can have it this good. We have the honor and privilege of presenting to you our honorary doctorate degree awardee, architect Olorogu Charles Oganebo Majoro, as he's been decorated by the chancellor, Dr. Cecilia Ebru, President of the Michael Cecilia Ebru University. Let's put our hands together as we observe this ceremony. Congratulations. Big, big congratulations. Big, big congratulations.
by the powers conferred on me as the chancellor in the name of the Senate and Council and in accordance to the provisions of the university status, I confer on you, sir, the honorary degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa of the Michael and Cecilia University Agbara Oto with the right and privileges attached there too. Congratulations, sir. Congratulations. Congratulations, Doctor of Science Honorary Causa conferred on Olorogo Architect Oganovo Charles Majoro. Hearing after he shall be referred to as Dr. Architect Olorogo Charles Oganovo Majoro. Let's put our hands together for him. <laughs> yes, some uh, uh, guest of uh, architect Charles Major, please come for your pictures. That's how that could be. You invited me. And his so family members, to please, to you can to join. To the the Thank you all for, for the honor of um, celebrating with Dr. Architect Olorogu Charles Majoro. Doctor of Science, Honorary Corsa, on this landmark achievement. It's me. Big congratulations once again, Dr. Charles Majoro. Honor well deserved. Honor well deserved. Big, big congratulations. Yes, let me invite uh, Dr. Peter Ingo and Dr. Charles Majoro for a joint picture, just the two of them, with the Chancellor. Let's allow the two doctors who have been conferred today to take a picture with the Chancellor. Dr. Charles Majoro and Dr. Pitego, please. Uh, picture with the Chancellor, Dr. Slaibu. Yes, a picture with uh, the Chancellor, just the three of you. No, just, just this one first. This one first. Yes, let's take this first. Yes. And then after that, the Uvi of Uvi would come and snap with uh, the Uvi of Uvi, His Royal Majesty. His Royal Majesty, Dr. Sideso Abe Wan. I think we should uh, clear space for Mugu there. Yes. Okay, Government College, old boys, I hear that uh, 
There's some protest somewhere. There should be no protest. You should uh, join uh, with your president worldwide and uh, do him the honors. Uh, would we'll allow you to take pictures. Please just come out here and file behind uh, architect Charles Majoro as uh, just file, file, file. Government College, can you quickly come? And, and uh, maybe you come, come forward, come out, come out this way. There's more space here. There's more space here, sir. There's more space, stand here. Yes, there's more space here. Government College, old boys. Congratulations, Dr. Peter Ego. You know, at this age, mm, but it's okay. Thank you. Let's clap for Dr. Bensi Uweru. Thank you. Let's clap for him. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, before I invite the awardees, the award, before I invite the awardees, Olorogun, Dr. Peter Iho, please can you, we want to see you later. Thank you, sir. I want to quickly appreciate the representative of the principal chief executive of Petroleum Training Institute. And that is Mrs. F. N. Jumbo. Mrs. F. N. Jumbo, please let's clap for her. Thank you very much for coming. They have given us the goodwill message. Thank you very much. We appreciate you, ma'am. Thank you very much. We want to quickly appreciate the associate professor of the Faculty of Law, Associate Professor Sylvester Abila. Professor Abila, thank you very much for coming. When we're introducing others, we could not. I want to quickly appreciate the coming of our dearly beloved people here, Mr. Obode Ibru. Is he around? I know I saw him. I saw him this morning, Mr. Obede Ibru. Those are the wonderful children of our president. And we want to appreciate the coming of Mr. Mamemo Ibru. He's the one coming to talk to me. Please let's clap for him. Thank you very much. He's the one there. That is our great child of our president. Let's clap for him again. Thank you very much for coming, sir. And we want to appreciate Mr. Sylvester Sido, the younger brother to our president, Mr. Sylvester Sido. Let's clap for him, please. We know you, sir. Thank you very much for coming. We appreciate you. Oh, our VC of Del Sul is around. Professor Ochuko, I know, please. Okay, please, can you come? Where is he? So quickly, just one minute. Thank you for coming, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm Professor Ochuka Nomara, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academies, Data State University, Abraka, representing the Vice Chancellor, Professor Andy O. Eguyenga. I want to congratulate. Michael and Cecilia Ibri University for this landmark occasion of graduating the pace setters and 
the icons of excellence. And I know they will make impact in this Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's clap for him. That's from Delso. Thank you very much. We want to invite the two awardees, the two awardees, just to give a response to the awards. Olorogun, Dr. Peter, can we hear you, sir? Thank you, sir. Will he ever get there? Will he ever make it? Will he ever hear the sound of the cock crow at dawn? Thank you. <laughs> I believe that says it all. When you are determined, then someday you will hear the sound of the cock crow at dawn. The Igbos always say, Egbe belu ugo belu o na nke si be ebe na. Kini eme, nya go si ebo ye ebe no. Oro zin kukwa ya, nya go si ebo ye ebe. Oro ya. We are, I'm overwhelmed. I'm touched and honored by this honor. There are many times, as I said earlier, where you are out there alone in the rain, in the sun, putting in your best, and you think nobody's watching, and you think that nobody appreciates. But that day comes when you now see that people are watching, people are appreciating, and this comes with this kind of honor. I want to thank the Michael and Cecilia Hebrew University for this great honor. Um, when I came in here yesterday, I, I was amazed at what I saw. I didn't know that edifices like this, with this kind of environment, peaceful and serene, exist in this country. So I do share the hope that Nigerians will wake up and know that what we are going to look for in Sokoto is in our Sokoto. We have excellence here, and we should come and take advantage of what we have. On behalf of my family, friends, and well wishers, I want to thank the university for this great honor. And I pray that the God Almighty will continue to grow you to the high heavens. Thank you and God bless. Let's clap our let's clap for, for him. That is Olorogun, Dr. Peter Ego. I remember in the 70s, very interesting. I must be glued to NTA. Thank you very much. We appreciate you, sir. Where's our ARC? Olorogun, ARC. Dr. Charles Majoru. Okay, so before maybe he comes back, let me quickly introduce Mr. Fidelis Ohofosa. Where is he? Mr. Fidelis Ohosa. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Mrs. S.U. Agbe JK. Mrs. F.U. Agbe JK, they are the one representing the commission, Commissioner for Higher Education. You are welcome. Thank you very much. Oh, our, well, okay. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, madam. We are now on the close of convocation. The chancellor, the pro-chancellor, the vice chancellor, the council members, the principal officers, the deans, Thank you very much. I now call on the chancellor to close and declare the ceremony closed. Thank you.
by the powers conferred on me as a chancellor, I hereby declare the convocation closed. We hereby invite Dr. Wawo to come and close the ceremony with a closing prayer. Dr. Wawo, the provost of Michael and Cecilia Foundation College of Education, Dr. Daniel Wawo. Let the mayor doff their cap. Gracious Father, we thank you for the ceremony of today. Wonderful God, you have led us successfully to the end. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Where we have faltered and not met your standard, forgive us in the name of Jesus Christ. We want you to bless this university by next time when we congregate to uh, give a word and to celebrate your goodness upon us. It will be more marvelous than this in the name of Jesus Christ. Our visitors as they go home, Grant them journey mercy and let your grace be upon them. Release your anointing upon this university. In Jesus' name, we are pray. Amen. Let's clap for God for that. Thank you very much. The procession now, which will be led by the chancellor. The chancellor, the procession. Oh, sorry. <laughs> National anthem, please. National Anthem. Thank you very much. Procession, please wait and let the procession, please wait where you are. Thank you. The Chancellor, thank you very much.
the best If not in the world Then nothing less Leave me to my destiny I have waited patiently I have vision though I believe I know I can count on me So stand up For the champions For the champions Stand up Stand up Stand up For the champions For the champions It's just life, that's how it is Cause we have our strengths and weaknesses Oh, I have vision, oh, can't you see? I'm on the move, make way for me So stand up, for the champions, for the champions Stand up, stand up, stand up For the champions, for the champions Stand up, for the champions And when I fall down, I have to pick myself back up. And when I fall down, I have to pick myself back up. And when I fall down, I have to pick myself back up. And when I fall down, I have to pick myself up. Stand up. For the champions, for the champions, stand up, stand up. For the champions, for the champions, stand up, stand up. Thank you. 